I think yard food was was <laughs> gross to me even at five. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by CinemaSins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of CinemaSins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined as always by Jonathan Watkins. <laughs> hey, what's going on? And Danae Hughes. I'm still here! Actually, obviously that's a whole bunch of crap. Uh, Aaron's not here. He decided to put me in charge. Um, so this is going to be a different sounding show. I am here with Jonathan. He actually is here. And we have a special guest. I, I don't know what's happening, but it's Chris, um, my boss. Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Is this the first time we've ever talked? No, um, it is not. Uh, we were on uh, one of the uh, Sift the Thrones uh, yes! podcasts. I knew I, re- rec- I I recognized your voice, but I couldn't remember where it was from. And so. I believe, well, you also been in my kitchen, but yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had yeah, this conversation so... on that episode, and now I'm remembering. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, we have we have conversed, uh, albeit briefly, but uh, yeah, we we have. Chris Atkinson uh, is your full name. Also right. known as one of the dynamic duo, the original creators of the CinemaSins world. Isn't that right? That is correct. Phew, I did not do any research before saying that. That was all from memory. Super yep, proud of myself. Yep. It, I mean, it can be tricky, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm one of those guys. Well, we all write for CinemaSins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the CinemaSins universe as well. Um, And we're going to jump into our show today, hopefully have a really fun time, starting with our Sin Side Scoop, where we look at all the videos that are coming out in the Sinsverse this week, talk about the process of sending them, how we feel about each show or movie in general, moving on after that to Keeping Tabs, where we'll talk about uh, various things we looked up. Hopefully they're embarrassing things. Maybe they're serious. We don't know. We'll get there soon. And then, of course, talk about stuff that you guys wrote in, fun things that um, maybe you recognized. We pull those comments from the comment section on the videos and also things that you guys write to us on Twitter and also for our email. But we'll just jump right into it. This week uh, released um, was Veronica Mars, Pulp Fiction, and on the music side of things, a new segment that we're going to be talking about. I'm really excited about that. Music from behind. And then another movie called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which was the only one that I knew anything about <laughs> this week. <laughs> so let's jump in and get started. What's he building in there? I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. Um, the first one, Veronica Mars. This was a Dicer Watkins. I'll... Although Dicer's not here, so I'll just be talking uh, for Aaron, I think. You know, I'll pretend to be him. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you take over and talk about Veronica Mars? <laughs> <laughs> have, have either of you, did either of you, wa- you watched Veronica Mars, didn't you, Chris? I did. Um, I believe I saw the whole series and the movie. So, uh, except, uh, have they come out with the new yeah, ones? Yeah, it, it just uh, it just premiered on Hulu. Um, Aaron actually talked about that last week. That was his... Uh, outside of the sins segment or whatever he said it was really good i've only seen the first episode so far so okay i haven't seen any of the new ones but i did see uh the original series uh pretty much i don't remember actually too many like episodes or anything well and that's um, the kind of, i mean it's but, kind of uh well at least the first two seasons were very much like uh, uh it was an arc i mean it was you know there was a there was a mystery going on throughout the entire season and every episode just kind of tied in uh yeah. to the point where the only way they would agree to bring it back in the third season is if uh, rob thomas would quit doing that and uh Right. You know, divvy it up some. And so in the third season, there's like basically three different story arcs. Like there's like – they're like six or seven episodes of um, – I hadn't seen any of this. And so as often as happening, I'll watch the Sins video and that's my first exposure to any – you know, anything kind of a universe. So first of all, I loved seeing uh, Kristen from – what was it? Like 2004 or something. She looks – just the exact same. She's like this little petite fairy. It's adorable. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And also, she really and well. And if you watch like the new season, I mean, she just. I mean, I mean, she does look younger in this, and she's right. got like the shorter hair, and she's supposed to be a high school student. But yeah, no, she totally looks the exact same. 
she has the haircut that I wanted really, really bad. And I did. I, cu- I cut my hair at one point in time, but y- you have to style it. Um, I have really fine hair. So it just sort of like lays on my head. It doesn't naturally like bounce up and look cool or anything. It just it's just there and there's not a lot of it. So for me, I have to put a whole bunch of product in it to make it look cool. And so I'm watching this going, that's the hair that I wanted. And instead, I just look like I don't know, like a mushroom or something. It was awful. I, I literally having flashbacks to high school going, that's the kind of hair that I wanted. Dang it. I should have used more pomade. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was kind of surprised though. Like it, it made me uncomfortable. The show made me uncomfortable. I think that's the best words to describe it. I, I think because it's like, um, were you expecting to- it to be a little more like just teenage oriented or? Because it's a it's a pretty dark show. Yeah, that was shocking to me. I didn't the jokes that were being made from the guys in the car about you know her mom being an alcoholic and like the rape reference and a friend dying and that was all just like man this is really really heavy stuff and also the relationship with her dad where he's apparently okay with her being in high school and also out at night taking pictures of people that are having affairs and then also solving crimes like i think he even specifically mentions it at one point in time like i can't remember his quote something like um uh be if you're gonna take out kane make sure you take backup oh yeah yeah well and that's after he tells her not to do it but then he like he realizes he knows that she's gonna do it so yeah it's a very tv relationship yeah um, but so had, they're I really good feelings. together. Yeah, I got that from The Sins. You know, that was something that kind of came yeah. across pretty obvious in how you guys, you know, put the script together is that it was dark and there was some stupid stuff going on, obviously. But then there was also some really positive parts of the show, too. The the rape thing is interesting, though. The whole sex – there's a lot of um, – and maybe this just plays into the fact that there's, you know, there's murders and stuff throughout the series. But there's a lot of focus on – sexually related like sexual crimes Hmm. um you know her she was raped um that's a whole backstory that they explore in the first season um this i believe it's the second season uh there's a whole part of the main mystery going on there that deals with uh pedophiles Hmm. and then in the third season i believe one of the main storylines is about uh because she's in college and there's an on-campus rapist. There's a there's a somebody on campus raping women. So um, question, because you watched you watched it, right? The mm-hmm. whole yeah, okay. yeah. Is it from a different approach? You know, because you've got other shows that are doing something similar. You know, CSI maybe style or Law and Order that kind of thing. Is it uh, from a different angle, like from quote unquote woman's perspective that she's talking about these subjects yeah. and these? Okay. I mean, it's all it's always from her. I mean, she's the obviously it's Veronica Mars. I mean, she's the main person, and um, she uh, you know it's 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 basically it's like a female. Uh, private investigator show um just a much younger version i'm trying to i mean it's essentially like something along the lines of like I mean, it's nothing it's not really like magnum pi but i'm just trying to think of something like the tone um okay. you know it's not like um it's not like gossip not girl Nancy or Drew. a lot of these other <laughs> cw shows yeah that's interesting did you it's kind of got okay, like well, a neo noir angle to it you know it's yeah. And, and it's very dark, like, you know, like you're saying it's I mean, I think I think it's definitely a show that like teenagers can watch. Like I wouldn't say it's just for adults, but um it's uh but yeah, but it it definitely doesn't uh it doesn't hold back in a lot of areas. So. Well, I guess on the heels of Aaron mentioning it last week and then it coming up on uh on the Sins verse this week, I'm kind of questioning more from a personal perspective like should i go in and should i watch it what will i find and if you think that her angle or the veronica mars angle to crime solving is interesting enough um i might actually oh oh, definitely i mean kristen bell if you like kristen bell i I mean do like kristen bell she tweeted me once kristen bell when i was stuck in the hurricane irma in florida a couple years ago she tweeted me directly asking if she could help my family get out of florida oh my gosh she was um, actively going on to Twitter, and one of my friends saw that she was like, hey, if anyone knows anyone that's stuck down there, I want to figure out how I can help. 
And so she said, hey, my friend has a five month old and they're stuck in Florida. And so she like messaged and was like, hey, can I do anything like cover your car, help you get out? So I, it was super shocking. You know, first you kind of think it was a joke, but she was just one of those people who was actually trying to jump in and make a difference in any way she could. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I've never met her or anything, but I mean, she's always come across as a genuinely nice person. Um, but, yeah. And if, if and that ever, sounds like she really is. So <laughs> you want to fall in love with Kristen. Well, one, she's obviously great because she tried to help me get out of a hurricane and my family. And two, mm-hmm. watch her Ellen thing about sloths. It will. It's amazing. Do either one of you watch The Good Place? Uh, I saw a few episodes of it and actually planned on just ripping uh-huh. through it. Um, and I, for whatever reason, I, I stopped. It wasn't because it wasn't good. Oh, yeah. No, it's that happens that, all the time with me, too. Yeah. So I had started, I think I saw two or three episodes and then, and then, and then stopped it for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, I've heard Aaron rave about it. I think Barrett really likes it, too. Uh, I need to watch it. That's one that's on my ever growing list of shows. I'm sure at some point we'll probably cover it on TV sense too. It's pretty popular, but um, yeah, no, I'm really curious to see that. I'm glad she's, I'm glad she's continuing on after Veronica Mars and not just doing like terrible romantic comedies, even though she has done a couple of those. <laughs> Who hasn't? Oh, yeah. Was Who it when in Rome? Was that her? Oh, that sounds right. I think right. that's where she met um, Dax. So maybe that's a, maybe that's a good thing. Oh, it could yeah. be. It could be. I think you, yeah, I think if, if you look back at all the um, actors who've ever been married to each other, it was always on some crappy movie <laughs> that where they met. That's what, that's what usually happens. Right. Like, I think it's, I think it's a bonding. It thing. has to be like, they know, they know it's bad and it's like, they only have each other, <laughs> but, you know, they sit there and sound off and suddenly it's like, wow, you know what? This, uh, I didn't notice how attractive this person was before until they started railing against this movie that we're, that we're making. Uh, I think you're right about that. All right, let, yeah. let's hit up uh, Pulp Fiction. Uh, this one was released this last week. It was an Atkinson share duo combo. How does Aaron say it, Jonathan? I think that's right. Yeah, it was, a, or it was like a joint, right? It was a Atkinson share joint. Ah, uh, a joint. Um, how did you guys find out? Find, discover this movie? Like, what is what is this movie? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty obscure. Um, it was, uh, d- distributed by oh. Miramax before they were ever really gotcha. known. Um, and, uh, and Tarantino had only made one movie. Very few people had seen it. And, uh, you know, he, he came out with this and, and, you know, and, and sometimes movies just break through, yeah. you know? So it was a, it was a small art house hit. And, uh, but, uh, you know, over the years, it's just developed this huge cult fault. No, anyway, <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, Pulp Fiction is, uh, uh, a movie that, uh, I was 17 when it came out. I was working at a movie theater that had it. Um, and, uh, is that when you were working with Jeremy? No, this was uh, before that even. Um, And uh, actually, this was like the second year I was working in movie theaters. Uh, I wouldn't meet Jeremy for another five years. But um, but uh, yeah, uh, when I did see this movie, I walked out just going, wow, just everything seems different now. Like I didn't know that movies like that could be made. Um, And uh, it was just an interesting uh you know, just I, I, just everything just had changed about movies in general. It felt like after that movie. Had you out. seen Reservoir Dogs? Oh okay. uh, yeah, yeah, I had too. I think I saw it like I think I like rented it or something like right before this came out. Yeah, the one thing that I will say about my first year working at the movie theater is, and and this is actually when I think back about. Uh, uh, all the movie theaters I've worked and all the people I've worked with and everything. This is a rare thing. All the people who were slightly older than me were huge movie buffs and had a library of movies that I needed to check out. And, uh, and like you go, I mean, I, I just remember going through movie theaters and like there was hardly anybody like that. Like most people go there and that's their, that's their job. And they kind of know things about movies, but not they're not buffs uh, necessarily. And uh, but I knew like three people who were like, yeah, try watching this, try watching this. And that, suddenly I was just going to Blockbuster all the time and renting these movies that they were talking about. So I saw Reservoir Dogs. I also saw it at a midnight show 
uh, but I think before Pulp Fiction came out, maybe it was after, but I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, yeah I had seen it. Yeah, that's his only movie I haven't seen on the big screen as Reservoir Dogs. I think one of these times, like when Bell Quarter, somebody just randomly shows it, I'm just going to have to go watch it just to say I did. Because I think I've seen every single one of his on the big screen except for that one. So I, yeah. have, a, I have a couple of questions about Pulp, Fli- Pulp Fiction, but first I want to say, uh, to no shock to anyone who knows me, I've never seen this movie. Um, hmm. But... So my questions are kind of twofold. One is like on the Sinsverse side and one is more of a Pulp Fiction question in general side. And I think that my question about Pulp Fiction might open up like a 17 hour long discussion, which we can avoid, of course. But um, right. my first question is about the Sinsverse side. How many people have been requesting uh, you guys to do Pulp Fiction? Because it is it is such a huge movie. So has it been something like from the beginning? People have been like, sin it, sin um... it. Yeah, it's one of those movies that uh, I rem- now uh, you you have to understand that it has been five years since I've actually gone to the comments uh, on these videos. Wow, um, it's scary in there. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. I don't really care about the scary, and I don't care about criticism. I'm just I just get tired of the the method of the criticism a lot of times. Mm. Um, I get tired of like. Uh, you know, if someone brings up something about something we got wrong or whatever, and it's something I know for a fact that we didn't, I mean, I'm open to the fact that we get things wrong. That sure. happens. But, uh, but like, uh, but when, when somebody goes over and over and over, like you'll get, you get a comment about something. I'll, I'll never forget this. This was on the dark night. Gosh, we're going to go on a big, huge tangent. Do it. Um, I remember on the dark night, uh, I had a sin about the guy that, uh, Batman, uh, captures at the, the place where the mayor gets shot at and all that. He captures this guy who's apparently a part of Arkham Asylum and everything. And, and, uh, and I, I think the sin said something to the effect of how does he know this guy? And, uh, like, how does he know all this stuff about how he was at Arkham Asylum and all this other stuff? And, and uh, at least three or four people came on there and said that that guy was the Killian Murphy character from Batman Begins. And it's not it's not even the same actor, not the same person, not the same character, nothing. And so, like, you'd go through and you'd say, no, this, this is uh, – and I found the guy's name. He's actually in uh, Ant-Man as one of uh, the security team. Uh, his name is like something Dastelmachian or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, and it's not Killian Murphy. And I was like, it's not him. It's this guy. And you know, you get people who would write, no, no, that's the, that scarecrow from the first movie. And you're like, no, it's not. And you get tired of just answering that type of, that same thing over and over and over again. And, and, and you get people who not only say that, and then you have another person who doesn't notice that that comment has been made. So then right. you keep getting people to say it and you get people who keep liking it too. Like there's like four or five people. Yeah, are like, yeah totally. You know, and, and you're like, come on, this is not, this is not true. Um, I did my research. So I, I know what I'm talking about. Right. So I, I got, I got tired of yeah. that in general. Um, uh, and, and, you know, so I, I have, I have not looked at the comments in five years. However, uh, back in the day when we used to regularly comment and everything, I used, I remember there was this one guy who used to, he, he used to say the same comment every time. He says, he's like, I dare you to do Pulp Fiction. I, and he, it's the Samuel Jackson thing from Pulp Fiction where he's like, I dare you, mf blah, 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 <laughs> and all that. And, uh, and, uh, and he, he's like, I dare you to do Pulp Fiction. I dare you, mf blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking at the time, I'm like, we're probably never doing Pulp Fiction. Never, ever, ever doing that. But if we did, who cares? And, uh, but, uh, this became a, a perfect storm to do it uh once upon a time in hollywood's coming out we we i guess we had the chance to do it when hateful eight was coming out and all that but for whatever reason didn't at the time uh but um 
but yeah, um, people have been have been requesting it, and I'm sure it's been requested more. I just uh, I just don't. Well, know. I remember yeah. whenever um, I think Aaron and I were talking, and he was uh, he was saying when this next one pops, just watch the you know watch the comments, and you know we have a Discord, and we've got other places for uh, fans of the YouTube channels to like gather. And there was just this nice little ripple that kind of went across, like holy crap, they did it! So there was definite excitement that you know that this was done. Um, I guess so. I'm going to just quickly ask my question about in general pulp fiction because Chris, you mentioned like you walked out of the theater as a changed person, and so because it's been so much time since this movie came out, and you know art mimics art and all that stuff. So there's probably been a lot of movies that have done something similar to Pulp Fiction since it came out. But at the time, if you can remember what set it apart that made it kind of uh, like mind bending for, for me, I'm thinking of this is going to be so silly, but for me, I'm thinking of when uh, the Lion King first came out, it was like the first time I'd ever seen a movie where it just started playing. And then all of a sudden it goes boom. And then like Lion King came up and the whole yeah. audience was like, Oh, <gasps> You're like same same year was by it? the way. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, just a yeah, few months apart. Same year. Wow, it, yeah. was, a, it was a big year for <laughs> breakthroughs and how to present. Uh, I guess art. I don't know, but ninety four was a hell, hell of, of a year. year. But uh, but do you do you remember? Yeah, what it was? I remember that too with Lion King, and I was an usher. I was just an usher in the theater. And of course, that that movie that was uh, always like. Uh, death to go into to clean because <laughs> it was sold out all the time. Oh, yeah. But you had that, and you had Forrest Gump, and you had True Lies all running at the same time. Wow. Uh, and uh, but like Lion King, I, I I used to I used to go in that and see the ending of that movie. I've seen it probably. I've seen the ending of Lion King just because of my job, probably a hundred right. times. And uh, and so I w- and I would always go in going, man, this ending is so stunning and dramatic. Well, the beginning is the same yeah. way, but like. But like it's it's it. I I always loved how they presented that. You yeah. know, like you know, it's, it's, it's the music swells up and there's boom. that boom. Yeah. Lion I King. remember the whole audience kind of going <gasps> like this this collective gasp because it was so unexpected. So like for for Pulp Fiction, you know, was it the the dialogue that was really unique? Was it that they presented it in a different timeline? Was it the, the way that they killed people? Do you remember what it was about watching it that just changed everything for you? So uh, the the first the first thing that I remember uh, about the experience was sure there's gangsters just sitting there talking about everyday things. Um, you know, they're not talking about the job that they're about to do. They're just talking about, Hey, I went to Amsterdam. <laughs> Here's what they call things in, in Paris. Here's all this stuff. And it's okay. That's, that's amusing dialogue. That wasn't in and of, in of itself, like the thing. Uh, but then they start talking about foot massages and, <laughs> and, and you, and they go through this whole thing and they, and they, they're talking about what, where does it rank? As far as if you're, you know, if you're a husband and wife and your wife gets a foot massage from someone else, um, is that considered anything major that you should get mad about and so on and so forth? And then you're like, OK, OK, that I, I so far I'm, I'm with you. The dialogue is 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 uh, is uh, is awesome. But that's not the, that's not the thing. Then they get to the door and they're about to knock on the door to these people that they need to get the briefcase from. And and uh, Samuel Jackson is like, it's not time yet. Let's hang back here for a second. And they cut away, break break from their whole job to continue <laughs> talking about the foot massage. <laughs> that was the spot where I knew this movie was different, and I was totally on board for, on it with it from that mo- point point forward. And uh, and so you start. You start getting into all the weirdness that it uh, that comes afterwards, and the you know the the luridness which you're 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 primed for because he defines pulp at the beginning of the the movie. Um, just uh, just going along for the ride and saying, hey, you know, hey, this is a completely different world, and um, and uh, it's uh, it's about it's about lurid stories you know and this is what we're getting into and and it's what's so weird about pulp fiction is that you know it's it's a prestige oscar type picture but it's also one that's just got these really basic b stories b b movie type stories all the way throughout and uh but he makes it to, to turn it turns it into an a story was it hard to sin it 
I, and we've, we've talked about this a little bit before because this is a question that we've read when we get to the comment section. Sometimes they'll come up like, you know, when you send a movie, does it ruin it for you? And, you know, my, my answer and Jonathan, yours, too, has been kind of like, no, mm-hmm. you know. No, not really. It doesn't ruin it. It's just fun. But for this one in particular, was it hard to find things that were quote unquote wrong? Not that that's what we always do, but yeah, you know. yeah, it is. It 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 it's, uh, it is hard. Um, during the uh, opening conversation with uh, Pumpkin and Honey Bunny and everything like that, you start getting into uh, you. First off, you get sort of lulled into the conversation, and you can't really a lot of times. You'll sit there and go, if I send something that they say, am I just not, am I not sending basic human behavior here? Because humans can think out things stupidly and they can think things out that are, you know, you're just sending the character. You're not sending uh, anything that's actually wrong with the movie. You start lending yourself towards like, really finding nitpicks or you're really just trying to make funny observations at that Mm -hmm. point um you you know that's the that's the responsibility of the sins writer is to just kind of i i feel bad when i let five or six minutes go by without saying something and and so i I will uh, at times and i hate i hate that this is a this is a secret out of the bad guys but sometimes you generate (laughs) sins that aren't there uh to to try to come up with anything at all uh and sometimes those are cut and that's completely fine but but uh but you know you want to try to get something you want to get a good like uh base of sins so that when it's cut down you've made a video that's entertaining exactly and uh it's hard to it's hard to now i mean yeah we can let 10 15 minutes go by in a movie and everything but uh, part of part of the uh what i sort of uh, have a philosophy about is that you're telling you're retelling the story that they're telling uh in the movie and you don't want to like come out of nowhere with something uh you know that the viewer of the video hasn't been primed for and everything a lot of times so so like 15 minutes in if you start talking about somebody saying this and whatever and they're not and they don't have any sort of frame of reference for it then you know it uh, it becomes it becomes like a lost sin to me like it just doesn't ma- matter at that point so yes you manufacture things every once in a while to try to get some momentum going so yeah it was hard especially during some of these conversations and everything like that but there are some things that come up, obviously, during Pulp Fiction that don't make much sense uh, uh, procedurally, especially with, uh, I, I think this has been brought up many times outside of Sins videos, but uh, especially when after uh, Jules has left uh, to walk the earth like Kane and Kung Fu, as he says at the end of the movie, in the middle of that, there's the uh, the Bruce Willis thing uh, with Butch, where uh, this is actually happening after uh, the things that happen at the end of the movie, you know, uh, and and uh, and uh, Marcellus has taken over for Jules. Essentially, he's now uh, Vincent's partner and everything. And that whole thing where Butch drives up and and and, and you know and Butch and uh, and uh, Marcellus just happens to be coming out of the donut shop, and 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 you know it's just like this amazing like how the hell is he here mm-hmm. right now like and a lot of people have brought up that well he pro- he probably co- is covering for Jules now that Jules is gone it's like I just didn't understand why the main boss the guy who hires people to be you know, to do the jobs for him is suddenly like, all right, I'll go out in the field <laughs> and I'll be the guy that, you know, that waits for Butch in his apartment with Vincent and everything, you know, it's uh, it just was a little far fetched, but it's also something that, yeah, it could have happened. It's totally something that could have happened in like real life and everything. I still, I still choose to send it. And I think people like sometimes forget that it's not like a, this is everything wrong with this movie from everyone's perspective it's like it's from the perspective of the narrator and that can that's that's a subjective thing so yeah you can send that i also liked how though that there was a lot of comments supporting going i've watched this movie a thousand times and i never noticed this you're right though so there's there is that kind of oh you guys found some stuff in there yeah the vincent in the restaurant at the beginning i never 
Never saw that. Yeah, that one came up a lot in the comments. Yeah, People well, I mean, that's that a good one, section. though, because, I mean, I've seen this yeah. movie. I mean, I don't know that I've seen it as much as Chris or Bear, but I've seen it a lot and uh, just never noticed that before. Jonathan, did you have any thoughts about Pulp Fiction? I mean, it is uh, it is a great movie. Um, I think one thing – well, and I think uh, the way Chris was talking about coming out of it, you know, just – feeling like you had seen something different. I was the same way. And it was clear that we had because this became like its own genre. Um, because for the next like five years, we were – or ten years, we were – you know, uh, there were so many like Pulp Fiction-like movies, uh, and the majority of them were terrible. Yeah. Nobody could quite get – I mean that's the thing. I mean love or hate Tarantino, I mean there's something very unique about him and – um, the way he plays with his love of movies and the way he does his uh, homages and uh, or if some people say the way he he steals things from other movies um, and the structure to a lot of his movies like he plays with structure in a way that I don't think I've ever seen anyone play with structure and it totally works um, because like for instance like he wrote True Romance you know which came out a year before this I guess. Yeah, like right out of yeah, here. Yeah, it was this, probably. Uh, yeah, he sold he sold yeah. the True Romance um, to fund Reservoir yeah. Dogs, I believe. And True Romance was originally written like Pulp Fiction, where it was the the structure of it was like you would go in and out, like you would go you know before a scene happened, and then you would go post that scene. And I don't remember recall if Tony Scott just wasn't comfortable doing it that way or if he just didn't want to do it that way. But um, I, I think that says something that like Tarantino can can play with this in a way that I just don't think anybody can. And I find that fascinating because if you can ever um, change movie language um, the way he does, um, I, you know, I, that's I've got mad respect uh, for that. And. I, I mean, he doesn't. He, he doesn't have really. I mean, in my opinion, he doesn't have a bad movie. <laughs> no, I mean, now maybe a couple um, of them. I don't like, like Django Unchained. I'm like, there are parts of that I don't care for, but like, it's not bad. Um, and there's yeah. great stuff in it. Um, and then um, even like something like Death Proof, which I know you love. Um, that oh, tends to I be that a lot yeah. lower on people's lists, and it is on mine. But at the same time, it's still really good. You know, yeah, it's kind of it's uh, it, it's the weird thing that you run into when you watch something like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and you're sitting there talking with a bunch of people afterwards and and they're like, yeah, it's about I guess it's like middle of the pack for him or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I mean, the, this movie's great, but like it would be like middle of the pack on yeah. his on his like filmography. And I mean, yeah. And he's yeah, I mean, but like middle of the pack for him is still 10 out of 10 for a lot of people. Yeah. Um and he's done um, a lot less movies than other filmmakers but like even but like other than like maybe like Hitchcock and I don't know maybe if you got into like Billy Wilder's filmography and like Scorsese and Spielberg I mean they they probably have as many movies as he does that are of that quality but the fact that all of his movies are of that quality is just unbelievable. Yeah. One one other thing about you were you brought up the whole like homage or rip off type st type stuff is I think we're pretty sure at this point of what kind of movies Tarantino loved watching when he was younger and everything especially since he always seems to sort of insert scenes of obscure movies into his movies and uh, you watch some of those and you're like, yeah, but I probably wouldn't want to watch some of these movies that he pops in, he puts in. And he somehow has found the gold that's inside those movies and he's made it his own thing. And yes, he might be ripping off a, a uh, you know, a, a, some sort of technique or, or a character or some sort of plot point or whatever, but it's really always his own thing. And you brought up all the other people trying to come up with Pulp Fiction movies after this that that failed, and it's because they don't they didn't know what the well, and they're was. ripping off Tarantino. I mean, they actually right. are ripping. Off. And I and I definitely want to make that clear. I do not think he's ripping off. I just was saying that people say that. Um, I think it's definitely a just like you said. I mean, it's it's he's finding the gold in those and you know using them in his own I think we're, way i think we're way too worried about like you know people having quote-unquote original content you know 
uh, I don't know, uh, even everything well, in music and art or whatever, there's always an inspiration. It could be like, you're ripping off the sure. sky. Well, God and what painted I was thinking, like, you've first. got like your uh, 60s and like your 70s filmmakers, like the Spielbergs and Scorseses and Lucas and, you know, Coppola and all these people. I mean, they were, you know, these are the the first guys that went to film school. And so their, you know, their inspirations are from earlier filmmakers. I mean, I mean, the Indiana Jones movies are essentially like just paying homage to the uh to the serials of the 30s and 40s which is why they're insanely racist uh but uh, but then you've got people like tarantino you get this later generation with like spike lee and tarantino and so their their inspirations are people that were inspired by people before them exactly and then we've it got all... a completely new generation now um, that, you know, I mean, I mean, we're, we're like in the sixth or seventh generation of like filmmakers in that way. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're gonna, and that's why we don't even really have like genres anymore. It seems like everything's just kind of a mesh of, uh, you know, and just whatever, a they melting say, pot, so. if you will. Well, before we go on to the next segment, I will say, um, there was one and, and Chris, if you've got anything else that you want to add that was in your writing process, definitely, definitely jump in and talk about that. One of the uh, sins was about the women in the bathroom all touching their faces and that not being realistic. So <laughs> oh, yeah. as a, as a woman watching that, I had two thoughts. One was, yes, I have been in a bathroom where it was that crowded and there are that many girls touching their faces and worrying and but it was when we were in like young like high school and we were experimenting with makeup and completely obsessed with making sure that it was all staying where we put it (laughs) so it's a very Mm -hmm. specific circumstance as a grown adult i never even look in the mirror anymore this is i guess personal you know you just you maybe just check your teeth but you also just hope your friends are going to help you check your teeth throughout the day so you just wash your hands and get out of the bathroom as fast as possible because who likes to hang out in bathrooms nobody they're disgusting but i loved that particular joke because i was like yeah that's it's it's not realistic in general well and i had i had originally written something i guess this was because barrett was the combiner on this one um uh and i wrote something about this too talking about how i thought it was unusual that she just decided to snort cocaine in front of everybody but i guess everybody in that bathroom is some sort of coke probably and it doesn't no. matter but it seems weird that you would go to a theme restaurant like that and be like all right i'm gonna snort coke on the sink that's this type of restaurant that i'm at right now like it's studio 54 or yeah. something like that it feels like to me that you would just go into a stall and you know uh you know come out you know pull out your little pocket right. mirror and then you do a line from there but not right there at the sink but uh <laughs> but uh yeah uh that brings up like a sort of tangential thing uh whenever we make observations of that nature when we're like it's kind of weird that this is happening or whatever uh it's 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 tough a lot of times to say that something's not realistic because there's always someone who says, oh, yeah, that's something that I used to do or you know, oh, yeah. or whatever. And you're like, oh, you found out that there, <laughs> this actually is very but, common, but and even though it doesn't seem that way. In certain circumstances, it's common, though. And it was – yeah, you're right. It's, it's all based on personal – the personal experience. I can't speak for all women, but I don't know. I have not been in a bathroom situation like that since I was in high school. <laughs> so – yeah, yeah. Yeah. As an adult, I've never walked into a bathroom and seen a crowd of women looking at their faces in the mirror. That just doesn't mm-hmm. that does not that does not happen. And if it happens to you, <laughs> uh, if, if if this is something you've experienced, please write and tell us about it. I'm very curious about that type of thing. <laughs> well, I also want to know if you've ever been to something like Planet Hollywood or Hard Rock <laughs> and just seen somebody like snorting, snorting co- cocaine on the sink. Yeah, because no. that's only happened to me like a couple of times where I've walked in on somebody doing something similar to that. And it's all – but both times it was at like uh, a shady bar. Like it was never at right. somewhere – yeah, like you said, like Planet yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some weird stuff go down in shady bathrooms, the girls' shady bathrooms. We could talk about that for a long time. But instead, we're going to go on to the next segment, unless you guys have any final thoughts on uh, the incredible Pulp Fiction. No. All right. Next up is, well, this is Mr. Cher did this one. Uh, This is from the Music Video Sins um, channel. 
music from behind. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you take the lead on this one? Because you're obviously very familiar with that channel and you kind of have the inside scoop on what that is. This was, uh, I mean, this was all Barrett, though. I wish we had Barrett here talking about this, but um, or you can pretend uh, to be Barrett. I'll, huh? I was pretending to be Aaron. You can just pretend to be Barrett. Hey, Nobody will know. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing, guys. It's amazing. I I can't do it. I can't do a Barrett. Um, no, it was just uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, Chris, do you remember what he when he came up with this, or was he the one that came up with this? I assume. Uh, I believe he did. It might have been a uh, collaborative thing with Made In as they tried to discuss what to do. Uh, this is real inside baseball stuff. Yeah, um, I didn't know how much of that you wanted to talk that- about. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm fine with it. I think it, I think uh, people probably know, and especially uh, you'll, as you've noticed in Cinema Sins itself, we comment uh, subtly. Uh, I guess subtly. I don't know. It's between subtle and unsubtle um, about how using music uh, is such a difficult thing. Uh, the music industry is like way, 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 way more rough about, and I and I think. In I, I I would play devil's advocate here, uh, probably with good reason. Um, the music industry is a little bit harder about the usage of their songs um, and everything. I think in this case, I think they they should be able to f- distinguish that people aren't listening to. They're not going to music video sends to listen to the music. You know, I I, I feel like in those cases they should be able to figure the the, the difference between those things but um it's hard to it's hard to come out with videos uh that constantly get claimed and you know you've done a whole bunch of work on it and then it just gets claimed and nobody can watch it so uh in in lieu of that uh coming out with a second vid- second music video sends every week uh the thought was to start this new series that didn't have any you know music attached to it uh, but it was about music anyway, um, and uh, to sort of uh, take off on those uh, those old VH1 yeah, behind the music, uh, behind the music. Oh, thing. It's so, so funny! Yeah, um, which I love music from behind. Which I'm sure he came up with that title is an amazing <laughs> title. For, it it works yeah, on yeah, so many is. levels. I actually, whenever uh, I was, the notes were sent out about okay, here's what we're covering for the show. I just thought that it was another music video called Music from Behind. I didn't realize oh. that it was going to be what it was, and I just had the best time watching this video. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's great and it it's it's 100% like Chris was saying. I mean, it's very much a parody of that. And even like the the style of the way Barrett and Barrett actually does the narration on this, um which is a little new too because it's been Jeremy. He did great. I thought he did yeah. a really fun job. It was really fun to listen to. It sounded to his, like yeah. you were watching a, a legit like production, yeah. which is what he wants to. I mean, a legit like uh, like documentary on yeah. something. And uh, I even noticed that in the comments, it was people when they they talked about when they realized yes. it was it was it was fake. So funny. I I cried I cried laughing when he was um, doing the and he said we can't stop. Whoa. Oh, do you remember when yeah. the car is crashing over? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like he he had the ability to you know sound like the announcer documentary voice, but then he also just super played it up. And so if, if at that point in time you're really not paying attention to that this is all you know just silliness, then you should know when his voice changes. And he said, "Whoa!" <laughs> just, oh my gosh, that was so funny. Well, and this was cool. I was really curious how this would go over, and it seems like it's going over pretty well. But um. You know, and like I said, I didn't have anything to do with the writing or anything, but like just I remember in the like we were just kind of looking at the the previous edits and the comments and stuff. It was kind of an idea of like it, it's one of those things where I feel like I'm trying to explain this. Where I feel like you just kind of have to go for it. Like you can't um, you can't make it seem like a joke, I guess. But at the same time, it has to be funny. right. And- I thought it was perfectly done, and the editing too. Uh, I was really impressed with how the whole thing kind of pieced together, just the different clips of like various car scenes and then like the vehicle would change and then there was a different vehicle when it went off of the road, just kind of clipping all of those things together from different sources and all the places that um, to find like all the pictures of Miley and just like there's one of her. I don't even know what it was from, but she's wearing this horrible like blue eyeshadow and this really funky wig and maybe she was at a 
party or it was from Hannah Montana or something, but just really hilarious, hilarious imagery to kind of go along with the whole fun of it. I, I don't know. I had a really fun time watching this one. Yeah. There's these type of things are really hard to do. Uh, before cinema sins, Jeremy and I tried to do a fake movie review show where all of our opinions were based on wrong things and we were giving a lot of wrong information and really weren't letting anybody in on the joke. And it's really hard to launch one of those things and have people get on board with it. Um, uh, when we released those, we re- we would release them before the movie came out. Obviously, we had not seen the movies. Um, uh, you know, we would release them, I think on the, the day the movie came out and say, here's the, re- here's the, uh, review of the dark Knight and everything. And we would just go through a whole bunch of just ridiculous things. Um, I think, uh, with behind, uh, music from behind, it's going to be more palatable, palatable because people kind of know, uh, sort of the sensibilities of these channels right. and everything. And, uh, and are more willing to accept something like this at this yeah. point. They would be more willing to accept a fake movie review show at this right. point. But, uh, but, uh, but it's just one of those, it's one of those things that it comes at a perfect time. Well, it looked like there was a lot of work that went into it. And for me, it, w- it came out just like, it was just great. So I don't know how often the music from behind uh, episodes will come out. But I'm excited for the next one. Yeah, so. I, yeah. I don't know how much. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much he wants to say. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I, I have seen another one, so I know, oh. I know, I know <gasps> other things exist. It's an exclusive. <laughs> it's a behind the scenes exclusive. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right, let's get on to this last movie before we jump into the next section. Uh, we'll start with Honey, or we'll, we'll go on to Honey. I shrunk the kids, and I was going to say I will start by saying, blow it out your shorts. Totally forgot about that one. Um, this was a movie that I watched when I was a kid. Uh, it's weird to watch movies like this. Whenever you're an adult and things start to fall apart uh, and you question a lot more than you did when you were a child. But I remember when this movie came out, I think this may have been the start of my absolute love of the behind the scenes stuff. Because they did a whole, uh, like a show or something, I think it was on Disney Channel, of how some of these scenes were created. Like when they get swept into the bag and they're kind of going mm-hmm. down that, uh, or just the, uh, on the bee, you know, flying on the bee. And they had this whole behind the scenes thing where you got to see how it was done. You got to see the stunt doubles, which they used obviously, you know, adults as the kids. So they had the adults dressed as the children, but, None of that mattered because it was all, you know, he, the the size and the proportion of everything was all fixed on the back end as they were creating it all. And I just remember thinking that was my first time, I think, to really process as a kid how films are made and how, you know, you you create these sort of. Yeah, I just hadn't ever done it. And I was really um, into it because I loved the movie so much. Specifically, I loved the oatmeal cream pie in the yard a Ugh. ton because it was like your dream as a kid to just run up to something and reach in Willy Wonka style and like grab a chunk of it and eat it. And it would be delicious. So maybe for you, <laughs> it was so gross as an adult, but as a kid, that was so cool. You guys didn't have that feeling when you were a kid. I don't, I don't think, think I think, so. I think, I think, I think yard food was, was gross to me. Even at five. Well, you were far, far more of a critical thinker than I was. Of course. I, yard food. I guess. I don't know. I also remember really wanting to have, uh, a pet ant and feeling extreme guilt for killing ants from that moment forward. My husband will attest to this. This day I have a hard time. Even when we have an ant invasion, I have to leave the room while he does the whole smash thing, you know? Um, so I don't know. I, I get complexes. I have another complex from um, several movies like about uh, the brave little toaster, you know, having a hard time sending anything to the, to the garbage because I, associated that blankets have feelings stuff like that oh yeah so yeah. i actually had you that. have that yeah yeah Isn't yeah that- uh yeah the, i think it's probably something similar where uh movies have sort of anthropomorphized yeah. everything you know and so like yeah even even the the most basic <laughs> things you're like oh i don't want to get yeah. rid of this because the person that thing has this feelings lamp or whatever. loves me and i love this lamp and why would i so right this movie kind of has some of those 
I don't know. I didn't realize until I was watching the sins video. Oh, that's bringing up all of these memories of literally being obsessed with this movie when I was a kid. So seeing it pop up in my feed and knowing we we're going to talk about it today was really exciting. I don't have like a lot of really like specific comments, except for that blow it out your shorts has definitely got to be <laughs> something that I bring back. Um, and my favorite sin by far was the Anna Kendrickson. I laughed out loud <laughs> when gross. I saw that one. It was so... <laughs> Which one was this? I don't even actually remember. Um, it was where it's like, if you say it, then it'll come to you. And you said, Anna Kendrick. Oh, Anna yeah, Kendrick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I write, I write so extensively about Anna Kendrick that it, you know, doesn't oh, really, you know. She is so great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She is so, so great. You know, and there's things that, you know, like you guys were saying, even in just a, m- a moment ago that just don't stand up as we get older, like the police showing up. And if a woman fainted and a guy was wearing a helmet like that and the police show up and your children are missing, they're not just going to turn around and be like, well, we've done our jobs. So stuff yeah. like that falls apart. And, but. You know, it's it's it, it, this is another interesting sort of like, you know, get into the minds of cinema sins type of thing. We we know this is a different world. This isn't really our world. This is this is, uh, you know, the writer's imagination, so on and so forth. Um but that's what we that's how we approach these things is as as if they are the real world and so like when something like that happens and everything we're going to write <laughs> yep. about it and yes the the you know the the Debbie Downers in the group are going to say yeah but that's just the way you know the the world is this isn't our yeah. world it's their reality and so on and so forth. I guess we're the Debbie Downers first and then they're Debbie Downers for our Debbie Downing <laughs> so whatever at some um, point somebody but, can't be offended and I guess we're just going to be the ones that are going to take that one on the chin yeah yeah um but uh yeah i saw this uh i i i took a um my my i guess it was me and my parents i don't know if my brothers were along for this one but we went to cleveland because uh we had uh relatives that lived up there and uh this was the same weekend that batman came out the mm-hmm. tim burton batman oh um and That's i saw the original both of batman those right <laughs> sorry though yeah yeah <laughs> they uh the uh, I saw both of these movies, uh, on that trip, like back to back. So I think I saw Honey, I Shrunk the Kids first, then Batman. Uh, what a huge weekend. Too. <laughs> yeah. Two um, of the highest grossing films but, of the summer, right? Cause this was the yeah, highest grossing think, live action Disney film for like five years. I, I, that came up in my research when we were doing the script for this. Mm-hmm. Wow. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and I was 12 and I, I highly enjoyed Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's something about these, you know, that these what ifs and everything, especially when you're that age yeah. that, uh, really, uh, really, what would you do if you were this yeah. small and, and thinking about, thinking about the yard in terms of not that it's, you know, a, a small acre of, uh, of land, but now it's this huge, long strolling countryside because of how small you are. And uh, how long it's going to take you to get from the the, the street to the to the house yeah. now? Although they really fudge that uh, in there, like they're I, if, if you know they come up with, I think we even mm-hmm. send this, uh, but they said something. I think it's the equivalent of three miles, maybe. Uh, I don't remember if that's what it was. Maybe it's less. Uh, but uh, you know, you if you walk your normal walk, you should be able to get that done in an hour. And, and they, and I know that there are like things along the way that happen. The bees, the ants. Yeah. yeah the kid uh, mowing the yard. All these type of th- the, the kid rain, mowing the maybe. yard, all these things oh, the happen. Sprinkler. But they make it, yeah, the sprinkler. And they make it seem like that deterred them for another seven hours or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Well, yeah, I mean, they you know. sleep. Like they go to yeah. sleep at one point. They're like, oh man, that's enough for yeah. today. <laughs> right. Take a nap and just Aaron's going to be really disappointed because I, I, I dropped my, um, my MC duties here, uh, and I forgot to say that this was an Atkinson Watkins share. No, joint. Oh, I'm never going to get it right. So you guys actually both wrote on it. So that's mm-hmm. pretty cool that you're both here on the on the show. You can just talk about this for seven hours. We're not going to though. Um, we got yeah. We got- the uh, well, the the I guess the the if you want to make this truly behind the sensey. <laughs> This was not a scheduled video. Oh. Um, the, uh, the, this was, uh, a replacement in case something happened. 
uh, especially since uh, I was going to be in Vegas for a month. And, and, um, and so, <laughs> yeah, and then something happened, and it, and it actually happened, I think, just before mm-hmm. I left. Uh, we were going to do The Boy because The Boy 2 was coming out, and they moved The Boy 2 to, I think, December is what it is now. Uh, and, uh, and so I actually, I have a, I actually wrote my end of the boy already and had it ready to go and all that. But, uh, considering the, uh, issue with any kind of claims or any kind of scheduling issues or anything like that, we got this done in case something needed to be done. So it was a replacement video and it turns out it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty apt one. It's 30 years since the movie came out. That's uh, crazy because I'm not aging. So I don't know how that happened. Right, right. Uh, I, I was about to, I was about to say, I I don't need me to be rude or anything. Danae doesn't age. (laughs) And so, so I just wanted, I just need guys needed you to know that. Thank you. Uh, That even though 30 years have passed for us, it has not passed for, her at all yeah uh let's move on unless you guys have any other thoughts from no. honey i shrunk the i mean kids. chris kind of touched on this i think the main thing with this one that was a problem though for me as an adult was that just they didn't, just didn't do enough with the premise in my opinion um and they show all that yeah. fun stuff over the opening credits <laughs> of them like on the oh yeah the opening stuff, credits none man of that happened. Oh. none of that happened oh yeah the opening credits have like the bet the best adventure ever <laughs> and instead they're like let's throw them out in the yard and like uh oh, okay well, we'll have a bee and an ant and a sprinkler system and lawnmower and all that but you know and that and that sounds exciting and everything, but, no. but you know i will say also about honey i shrunk the kids though the one thing about it not that this is a great uh, example of him, but man, I miss Rick Moranis. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. And I know there's a lot yeah, of personal he, uh, reasons and stuff that he's yeah. not doing live action stuff anymore. He's, I think he just, yeah. I think he does a lot of vo- vo- uh, voice work, like on video games and. Uh, yeah, Rick was one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah. Spaceballs, and that was one of the uh, references in the outtake, mm-hmm. and I loved that movie too. Well, Little Shop of Horrors, and uh, yes, My Blue Heaven, Parenthood. I mean, he was. He was great. Yeah, he used to be a ubiquitous part of your movie watching yeah. uh, mm-hmm. pastiche uh, back in these days, and then and then suddenly he was he was uh, gone. Yeah, the rumor uh, is, I believe, uh, it had a lot to do with John Candy. Um, his, and then oh, really? I think there was well, something heard, else that happened. Like his his wife, I think, passed away. His wife passed away. That was another thing. Yeah, yeah that was the big yeah, his thing. Wife, and and uh, he decided that he was going to stay home for the kids. Yep. And, she, yes, I'm so uh, sorry. That type of thing. That's right. The John yeah. Candy thing has to do with John Hughes. I got I got my I got my people that's that okay. left unexpectedly out of that Hollywood confused. <laughs> You're totally fine. Yeah, I think, and this is something that I read in memes more than anything, but she passed away in 91. I think it was from cancer, and so he just made a choice to raise his kids, so he, he just became a dad, which is so great. Yeah, I love that about him. him. Back for, uh, like they backed up mm-hmm. the truck to try to get him back for Ghostbusters, which there might have been other reasons yeah. he didn't want to do that. But um, Well, I've heard it's not, not awesome to be in Hollywood, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, next, we're going to go to the Keeping Tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. (laughs) Ha ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. So in Keeping Tabs, we all uh, give you guys a peek into what we research as we're writing for the CinemaSins universe. So we each pick a few things that we can remember having open tabs we have had open for research during these movies, they could be funny. They can be embarrassing. They could be really, really strange. Uh, we just have a chance to talk about it. Now, personally, I didn't actually write on anything this week, so I have nothing to share. But did either of you guys have anything that you were researching for Veronica Mars, Pulp Fiction, Music from Behind, or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids that you want to share? Cool. Moving um, on. Just I'm trying to remember <laughs> uh, anything on this one. Um, it's funny. Like, if if if. If I were to think about all the times I researched something, I could probably come up with something, but maybe not for these uh, movies. Yeah, well, since yeah. you're not on um, here all the time, I mean, if you've got something, like, just uh, one you remember from the past, I mean, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, well, a lot of times it, it usually comes down to something a character says about something technical, um, uh, you, you, and it, and a lot of times it has something to do with, like, 
can you survive a fall when you jump out of a plane <laughs> and and the parachute opens at x feet and all this type of thing so you get you get that type of thing the problem with research and 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 i have no problem with research but the problem with research on the internet especially is that you will find a bunch of people who say, yeah, that's possible because here's the reason. And then you'll see a bunch of people who are like, no, that's not possible because here's the reason. And both of them seem right. Um, so um, I, 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 this is a, this is for a, uh, a movie that we haven't uh, come out with a sins video for yet, but um, and, and you probably will be, you might be able to glean, might be able to glean what we're doing, but I wrote, opened up a tab, uh, for this one, uh, the other day, uh, that was talking about like, if you get a second oxygen tank underwater, uh, like if you're using your one oxygen tank and someone throws a second one down, uh, the second one apparently uh, th- the second one gives you a better a, a better chance of getting nitrogen poisoning of some <sighs> sort um, and uh, and and because it's it's a it's a really ludicrous part of this movie where a second one has to be thrown down and the guy gives the reason why uh, he didn't do it earlier and uh, and so like uh, I, I looked that up and of course nothing like you can type I'm really good at Google. I'm like better at Google than most. Uh we should uh, have a Google and, Wars. You know, like what, somebody gives us a topic and then we both like race to see who can find it the fastest. Oh, it would be the best game show. Oh, it'd be it'd be, it'd be Chris it. and like, Barrett so many, would be at the top. I'm pretty sure. There are so many people who you you you're if you you know you're in social functions a lot of times you know someone will go I don't know what that is or whatever and like hey let's look it up and you'll see somebody look it up and they like spend 5 minutes on their phone <laughs> and then you're like okay I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and do this <laughs> And and you get it within like two seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it's like it's like what were you looking up? What were you? What was what was your deal there? I, I have that same um, experience. So if if like you can't find it on your search, it's like maybe maybe it's not there. Yeah, and and so I typed in very specifically: Does a second tank when you're scuba diving? Get, increase the chances of I think it was called nitrogen narcosis. Yeah, I think you're right. And and uh, I I I looked that up and and basically Google was just like gave me a bunch of pages that said here are the dangers of scuba <laughs> diving. Here are a bunch of things that you want to watch out for for scuba diving. You might click on one of those, but it doesn't tell you about the second tank problem. And, uh, and so like, and it could be that they're talking about at the depth that they were or some like nonsense like that. But still, I was, I, I still wrote something about this. Even if it's a hundred percent true, the ludicrousness of like not throwing that second tank down there because of that reason is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> Just, you know, like they're running out of air. Go ahead and throw them the fucking tanks. So like, you know, it's just the what's way so funny is that I know is- exactly what movie you're talking about. I didn't, I'm not working on this one, but I saw this movie like a year ago and I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I, like I know the scene. Uh, yeah, I, I that <laughs> there are going to be people who know exactly this movie. I, uh, I don't. I'm, I'm, have, I'm hearkening back to watching The Abyss when they hold their breath um, and wondering why they didn't have oxygen. So I, mm-hmm. I know I'm wrong um, about yeah. that. But uh, that was an alarming movie that will stay with me for my lifetime that I'm having flashes back to right now. But that's like the perfect, just the perfect thing. That's exactly what Keeping Tabs is about. Just anything that you researched that just was interesting uh, recently. Yeah, the only one I really made a note of, just because it was odd, what I found was that in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, there is a sin that I wrote that, uh, yeah, I'm almost positive it stayed in, um, where the cat, he calls the cat, he's like uh, Matt Frewer's character, uh, says, what am I doing wrong, Spike? And he's talking to the cat. And then I wrote a sin like, well, yeah giving your cat a dog's name um, is yeah. one. And so I just, out of curiosity, though, because I just was picturing like a bunch of people going, my cat's name is Spike. Um, I looked up, do cats really, uh, do people name their cat Spike? And what I got, it wasn't so much that. I didn't find anything out about that. But the first thing that popped up was um, apparently there is a lot of people researching if cats really have spikes 
on their penises. Oh, yeah. What? The barbed yeah. penis. And um, I didn't get too in-depth with it because I was terrified of what I would find out. But apparently there's a, a theory of why <laughs> the female cat screams so much during the act of sex is that uh, – yeah, they have a. They're being penis. pierced. So you maybe maybe Chris knows more about this than I do. But. I I actually don't. I have three oh, male yeah. cats, and they they were all uh, um, oh, okay. uh, neutered. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, wow. I I am not familiar with this. <laughs> but apparently, it's a it's a. I mean, I, I've heard. I mean, I've heard. Yeah, of I had never heard of this, thing. and it's like the first thing that pops up when you when you when you merge spike and cat. Oh, that's yeah. something that you would never expect. I would have expected like a list of like this is how many thousands of cats are named Spike in America. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> like, I, and 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 let me make it clear: it is so disappointing when you find out that the thing that you think is wrong is is not wrong. It's the <laughs> yes. most disappointing thing ever. <laughs> uh, that is so true. Um, just you know, I don't know if this is how it is for you guys. Maybe it's empathy. Maybe it's that I'm a woman. I don't know. I'm going to ask you. Are your insides hurting right now thinking about a barbed penis? Because mine, I actually, like, I'm experiencing it, phantom pain. It pains. was when I first learned about it. I mean, now I've, you know, I've thought about it enough, I can't I stop guess. thinking about it. I, I think, I, I, yeah, I mean, I can't obviously imagine what it would be like. No. No. But I can, <laughs> yeah, I can empathize. Yeah, I can empathize. Uh, the things I learn on this show. Um, I didn't really, Let's but I, yeah, on. I didn't really have much of. That was the only good thing. Um, I was curious. There's a line in "Honey, I Shrunk the Kids" where he uh, he says he's he's like labeling off the things that he's got for the the neighbors are going like on a fishing trip, and he says that he has French fries and tater sticks. And so I was looking up if they're actually because I was like, is there really a difference between <laughs> French fries and tater sticks? Aren't those the exact same thing? And apparently they're not. Oh. So. Yeah. That was they, the uh, they, 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 yeah, there's those uh, weird, like, um, yeah, like they're dry. I don't think you yeah. even cook them. Uh, pa- but it's I basically don't know. a fry. Uh, <laughs> it's just a different, yeah. like, texture. Um, the, the, the thing that I, I – the thing that um, – it, it this is a really weird thing. Sometimes I get hung up on some things in movies that, you know, why did they include this? Why is this in here? Uh when when Matt Frewer is about to go on that camping trip with his buddy, his buddy shows up, and it seems like some big plot point that the buddy shows up in his trailer and says, "Hey, we're gonna go. Let's do this. We got to get there by six or whatever." And and Frewer has to tell him like, "I'm sorry, I can't do it," and has to lie to him about it because who's gonna believe the story about shrinking the kids and or that all the kids that. were missing? Yeah, right. And uh, and and like, I don't. I know that the camping trip is is uh, they plant a seed about that because of that. You know, he's he's doing the food, he's doing the inventory, he's doing all that. It just really never ever needed to come into play, and like the, the that dude who shows up even looks in the backyard and sees Rick Moranis and the wife, like like doing something weird, and they show his reaction. And I was like, and 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 in like most movies, it would be like this guy is going to somehow throw a monkey wrench into things, but he doesn't. And right? yeah, he doesn't do anything. He just kind of like it's goes just, away. <laughs> yeah, he goes away. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I understand why it's in there because it was probably in the script, but like, there's just no need for it. It's like a complete diversion to have the guy come over and then Frewer has to lie about why he can't go all this. And it just doesn't make any difference to the story at all. And that's why there's this one sin completely out of nowhere that asked what that dude was in the movie for. <laughs> Do I remember for. this correctly? Oh, like a second Doesn't time. Doesn't he like tell him that his his wife is uh, menstruating? Or sick. Was or it was sick? It I thought it was implied that it was like the time of the month or, you know, one of those like 80s. Oh, I actually don't yeah. remember. 
Um, yeah, I, he, he, I think he does say something uh, along the lines oh, of... Oh, cyclical uh, humor. Cause I, yeah, because I just remember thinking, like, it would have made more sense if he just said, you know, we can't, you know, we're our kids have disappeared. Or not disappeared, but, like, maybe, like, they've gone to somebody's yeah. house and we can't, I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, if, if, he had, if he had even admitted that the kids were yeah. missing... It would have, yeah. Maybe the, you know, I they would have been like, oh, we'll help find him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, that's and, and terrible. Then, and then you start bringing the whole neighborhood into it, you know, where yeah. it's like, uh, hey, yeah, let's look, let's everybody have a patch of grass and try to find these kids. Um, so, I don't anyway. know. I know this is kind of going back into talking about it, but I don't care. Um, I don't know if, uh, Chris, you did um, both of them, but there was a similar kind of. Um, sin that was mentioned for pulp fiction too which was so like in in honey i shrunk the kids it was if you planned on leaving town at this time and then you started about this time of the day and you kind of worked your way back and like you, you would have been late from the beginning of the day why is that even an excuse now was one of the sins well then, i know jonathan did the one in honey I oh shrunk the yeah because they okay. made some um, comment about like i mean the way they phrase it like they wouldn't have gotten there till after the cutoff yeah time. yeah and then something else happened similar in pulp, the Pulp Fiction video, which was uh, Bruce Willis's character being able to, like, get back to his house to say, we got to go because we're going to miss the train. But then, like, he referenced oh, it yeah. earlier. And so whoever wrote that one had also worked that whole timeline out. I'm really and impressed. And that, that would be Barrett. That. Barrett did that one. That's um, so impressive. Like, how, yeah. I, I don't even I don't think like that, you know. And so when those things pop up, I'm, oh, my gosh, I. Well, yeah, that's really smart. Anyway, yeah, kudos, they, they, kudos they to do you guys. that a lot. They they do that with time a lot in movies where they'll they'll say that this is something that is we really need to do this now, and then somehow find a way to find a pocket of like fifteen minutes inside of five minutes. Yeah. Um. So like you know it's like oh we got to do this now. It's like two minutes before or whatever. And then there's this like long conversation that happens somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like it's a bubble around the time where like you know that's like the old show Out of This World where the girl could pr you know press her fingers together and like uh, the every then time would stop and everything like that. It's it's almost like that. Like nothing is just <laughs> there's nothing else going on in the world when these conversations happen or these actions these other actions happen where they're like you know uh, they got to do all this stuff before this one big thing happens and everything and they do so much like the 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 most ludicrous thing in pulp fiction is that he goes into his apartment and he gets the watch and he knows that they're after him and he's like ah you know what i'll just do this toaster strudel thing no no problem with that i haven't had breakfast today why well, might as well just go ahead and throw that in there even though he's like in danger and needs to go having never seen that movie whenever he uh and i'm gonna use their real names because you know characters i don't i don't know the characters as well but bruce's character kills uh john's character yeah i i was like wait is that real you can't kill him <laughs> he's the main yeah. character so i don't know if that was like really something that happened or not but i'm i think i probably should watch pulp fiction and find out because i had a lot of questions yeah, i do like so. that sometimes the comment section will come up with those two like hey you guys what about this then and they're really smart so let's jump yeah, into yeah. the comment section uh and we'll hear from you guys i want to know what you're thinking i appreciate your honesty you're a real straight shooter you are the ones who are the ball lickers so here in the comment section, we each pick a few comments that we came across over this last week's um, video releases that we can respond to, answer questions. So you also are welcome to just send in general feedback as well. And uh, you can tweet us, you can write to us. I'll tell you about all that stuff here in just a minute at the end of the show. Um, so Veronica Mars, there was a couple that came up on Veronica Mars, but one of the things that happened, it was kind of goes back into even keeping tabs is that there was a several comments that said, where are the marshmallows or where are my fellow mm -hmm. marshmallows or I'm here, where are the marshmallows? Mm -hmm. And I kept seeing that pop up. So I had to do a little bit of research into that and discovered that a marshmallow is somebody who's a Veronica yep. Mars fan. 
Did you guys know I, that? I've heard it. I did yeah. not. I mean, I guess technically I am, but um, I I never I, uh, <laughs> coined myself that. So. You're a marshmallow. So wait a minute. Do they call themselves marshmallows or marsmallows? I'm pretty sure it's marsh. Uh, yeah, probably it definitely mar- make a lot of sense. I think it's marsh. Yeah. That, they totally missed an opportunity there. They did. Because uh, now that now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, I'm new, so I'm not. Their whole not. their their whole their whole uh, following is null and void, <laughs> in my opinion. Now that they. <laughs> <laughs> uh chris you don't usually br- uh, browse the comments as you've already said so if you don't have any that's totally fine um yeah i don't you- have any if you guys want to find some random ones that are not on your list and uh, i can address <laughs> i will do that cool i've actually got one that you can answer here in a minute John- jonathan did you um, have well, one I did you wanted, to- we kind of talked about this when we were doing the music from behind but I, I did I, I did go through those comments because I was really curious and it looks like for the most part man everybody was really really digging that so uh, I don't have any specific comments towards that but I just thought that was really cool that people seem to be really getting it and getting behind it especially on YouTube where sometimes you don't get the nicest things so. yeah um, on Veronica Mars I did want to note that somebody said even by your standards roll com Mars Urschels was a bad joke. Yeah. Please never say that again. And just from uh, my – and Danae can speak to this more than me, but uh, Aaron wrote that, and um, he's probably now going to say that. Of course he did. Time. Of course he wrote that. There's no one else who would have wrote yeah, exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. And you telling him never to say that again, he'll look at that as a contest and uh, or a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a compliment. You've just made, you've just made like – uh, you, it's one of those where you cut off the yeah. head and two uh-huh. more show up. That's yeah. the that's what happened. That's the comet it's Hydra. Non right. Mars TV sends videos now. So thank you, thank you so much. Uh, oh yeah, I read that comment, but I was I and I I kind of smirked, but at the same time, I love hearing John uh, Jeremy have to kind of like work those out. <laughs> you know, like. Roll Kamaral <laughs> so and I I'm all for trying to make that work. Like dicks to him on purpose, but it's like I do truly think through these things. Like, is this going to be a problem for Jeremy to say, <laughs> or I'll make a note of it? Like, uh, you know, let's do this if if this causes an issue. But yeah, it makes it fun. Um, back onto the music from behind. Uh, when you mentioned that one, there was um. I think I thought you guys did a good thing in asking, like from a, from a channel perspective. You had the channel ask the question, "How long did it take for you to realize this was all made up, or is it?" And so then there's a lot of commenting happening, you know, kind of underneath. Oh yeah, that. Barrett put that and, in. Right? He commented on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was really smart because then it kind of gives people a place mm-hmm. to sort of answer that question. It cracked me up because one of them said, "I realized it was fake when you said Whig Party in the USA." Which, here's <laughs> here are the jokes that preceded that one. Um, who could forget her Oscar-winning performance in The Help? Oh yeah, thirty-year career, thirty-year career, wig obsession right. where she was sourcing her own hair from hair that was on the floor, the Thrive <laughs> Meter, and then David Schwimmer, fellow American Idol judge Gwen Stefani, like all the people who had the uh, mm-hmm. the wigs was David Schwimmer and the fellow American Idol judge Gwen Stefani. Red Fu and her own father. Then the wig party joke came. It took that person that long <laughs> to realize that it was a joke, wow. which is just so funny to think about. <laughs> well, it goes to show, by the way, uh, I, I, I know this is in a way weird that I, I am, I'm saying something seriously about this, but, uh, but, uh, it goes to show how information like you, you can you can watch something and like things will just go by and you won't even yeah. question it and <laughs> and you know saying stuff like 30 year career and everything you don't immediately if if especially right. if you don't know if it's if it's fake right off the bat so many things will go by your head we're just like oh yeah yeah whatever this is just a behind the music type of thing and <laughs> uh and then finally something completely insane happens. And then it informs you that all that stuff that you just yeah. glossed by is fake. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in general, you should probably know this is fake, like from the first five seconds. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but like if you don't know that going in, uh, it's, it's funny to me. Like you, you would watch a regular biography like this. And they would probably say things that they probably say things that are not true in those too, 
and and they just and it goes right by it goes in and out you're just like oh yeah yeah, yeah okay it makes sense yeah it's all how the, the, the narrator is so confident in delivery but if you're listening to the words and then you're looking at the images you know with her oscar winning performance like yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's like it's it's there's so many things that are wrong with that yeah. one statement. Uh huh. Yeah, and then it's a more obvious visual of the hair on the floor that she's sourcing wigs. You know, even though she's from without permission. It's anyway. I I thought that was so funny. I cracked up thinking about all the people who it took them way too long. But at the same oh, time, yeah. that is super super fun. Um. So here's a question that came up, or a comment rather, on Ver- Veronica Mars. Uh. True C3 says, I'm confused how Foxy or Staxed is racist. And then the candy music lover said, it's a joke. He refers to anything as racist for laughs. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to hear more about how that joke kind of developed and, and why um, that sort of the way that the narrator approaches that. Oh, good. I haven't, I don't know if we've actually ever discussed this. Uh, maybe we have. I know that someone asked a question on the Sincast about some of the origins of some of the ones that we've done and we went through and everything uh, uh even in some instances could tell you exact videos where it happened um where it first started and everything i can tell you that this happened the the that's racist for everything started with x-men first class um because i you know just just looking at all the different things that are ist um uh you know you can be ageist you can be sexist you can be all these different things i just didn't want to this was when it was just me and jeremy writing uh and and there was something at the end of first class where rose Byrne comes into this group of guys at the very end and is telling is trying to tell them uh, something and and they don't believe her basically because she's a woman and there's a, I think there's her memory's been wiped by Xavier or whatever at the end and and all she remembers is the kiss and so all the guys are in the room are like yeah yeah what's what happens when you have female agents and stuff like that something to that effect I don't actually remember everything about it but it's towards the end of that I think Jeremy had written a that sexist comment or something like that, just like that's racist. Um, and, uh, I, 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 uh, this was back when, I don't know, we, we would debate about certain things and, uh, I was just like, why don't we just call everything offensive racist? Um, and, and, and that way it's just sort of, uh, it, uh, we don't have like three things that sound exactly the same, but they're just different kinds of ists. And let's just make everything racist at that point. It's really just a joke, a play on anything that's offensive. Um, and uh, instead of just like saying that's sexist, that's ra- racist, uh, that's, that's, uh, ageist. that's ageist. Yeah, yeah. We just have one thing that covers all of it, and it's um, racist. What's that? And it's the and it's racist. And I think I personally think that's funny, but I didn't know when I first started like writing scripts, and so I was like trying to do research onto what technically would this be considered <laughs> sexist or and um, it, Jerry, I think <laughs> I think also uh, when I was living in New York. Um, I think I heard somebody say something like that. Um, uh, uh, and it was, it was, I think it was either a sexist or ageist comment and, and for them and they were just being funny Mm -hmm. and they said, they said, Oh, that's racist. (laughs) And, and, uh, and so like it, there's probably a, a little bit of a derivation from that too. I don't remember if that's what it actually was though. But That's for awesome. me, when it was when when Jeremy wrote the the sexist comment, I was like, it would be funny if we just made everything offensive, <laughs> just racist. Now, unfortunately, there it, it's it's un, it's unfortunate now that we are in a society where yeah everybody's yelling back and forth what's mm-hmm. racist and what's not, especially now. And so I have personally started to like. Uh, 
uh, cut those uh, at times um, just so we're not getting mixed up in that argument. Even though right. we've been doing this since 2013, we've been calling everything offensive racist. Um, there's been a so, there's been a conscious effort on my end, at least. I mean, there's still some that get through, but. Uh, if I'm on a script and there's something that says that's racist on it, I'll usually want to cut it unless it's just something that is absolutely racist. And the, I think the last script that I was on that actually had that had one was Dumbo and the, uh, the cartoon Dumbo, uh, which actually had racist stuff in it. You right. Know? So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, because that the, the, you know, the times have sort of changed over the years where, you know, we've gotten into this bad, uh, you know, what's yep. racist, what's not, yeah. you know, yeah. I've started to avoid them. Well, good for you for kind of recognizing that culture can change and, and shift around. I think it's interesting though, that in the comment section, you'll have so many, um, fans that help the person who doesn't know that that's an ongoing joke they'll like comment and say hey this is just part of the you know this that's that's part of the joke that's that's a part of being funny uh, on this channel yeah. so so and that was another reason why we we stopped doing comments because uh essentially we'd have a bunch of backers <laughs> at, right. at some point right. that would just go ahead and do the work for us and uh, that's awesome. and I was like you know we, you know there's that's a second reason why we don't we don't do that. It's it's. Uh, by the way, uh, just as an aside, it's a perfectly great. It's a great thing that I encourage people make who create new channels to do to get on the comments mm -hmm. and comment with everybody because that's always a good thing that you're you're showing that your fans matter and everything like that. I'm not saying that now that I don't do it, the fans don't matter. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, when you're first starting and everything, it's good to do that to sort of build that rapport because yeah. uh, then you start getting, uh, you know, people who are on your, on your side uh, for life. And we would, I think we would both, uh, I think everybody would do more comments if it was just wasn't such a chore to do it at this point. But, um, but I yeah, I encourage people starting new channels to do that. I've had to uh, stop myself. Um, you're talking about the comments that kind of got on your nerves. One of the ones that I struggle with right now, maybe it's just at the new person, and um, is the people who are like, well, you obviously don't love movies or, you know, you're, and it's like, no, 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 you don't understand the, you don't understand the vibe of, of what we're doing. But there are just so many, there's so many comments, not that there's a lot of comments particularly like that, but there are a lot. And then if you start commenting on one, suddenly there's, you know, 200, 300, 400 more that you could go and, and comment on. And also, I don't speak for the group. I am the new girl. I'm not going to be found getting into some sort of comment debate. When it kills me on Twitter, especially because when you see that, because it's like, I know Chris isn't on there, but like I'm on there, Aaron's on there, you know, you're on there, Janae, Barrett's on there, Jeremy's on there. And like, if you read like, just picked three random uh tweets from one of us there's a good chance it's going to talk it's going to be us talking about how much we love a movie uh you know yeah. so it's like yeah. you know you're clearly not even really reading what we're saying so i just i give up right i've, I've yeah. always said that if the people who are so vehemently against cinema sins ever sat down with all of us started talking they would realize where we're coming from on everything yeah. um there, there's hardly anybody out there who, after talking with us for about three hours, would be like, oh, yeah, uh, they, 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 I still hate what they do or I still hate them or whatever. Right. I think you can I think you'd find people who still say they hate what we do, but they may not. They would know where the, the place is coming from. Yeah. Do you know, I don't think people realize that there's some movies I hold in high regard, like Pulp Fiction, perfect, perfect episode to be talking about this. Uh, Back to the Future, which is uh, one that I, I, I only was the only writer on the Back to the Future one. Um, you know, uh, the Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time. And, and I probably would give more sins to it now than I did then. Um, because we were, we had a sort of a limit back, back in the days when that one came out. But, um, there are uh there are so many things that you sin in a movie that you in that you like that you actually like um and uh and and there's no way to actually go and tell you what the 
what the reasoning or the basis for that is other than we're trying to make it an entertaining video yeah. and maybe the idea of sending something that you like is is uh is just is our is our is a way of looking at a, a, a scene differently or whatever uh it it, it a sin rarely ever uh means all the things that some people attach uh, mean that their meanings too. I think sin. I think people get have a hard time getting past the word sin a lot of times, um, and they think that it means that's something this movie is going to hell for, uh, even though it might not be that big, or or it may not even be something that you need to hate or whatever. So, it it hap it is it's. I think you have to realize what it takes to make a video that will appeal to the masses, and maybe sometimes upset the masses like the whole point is sometimes to upset you uh about sending something and especially back in our early days good god we would try to do that all the time it was that's why there's a sin for adele in the skyfall video uh we love adele yeah. we love that song but like in my mind back then i was like let's do something that just people are like why is that a sin and that was one of them it's like just adele was the sin adele and then and you know you got all these people going what's wrong with adele oh there's <laughs> nothing wrong with adele that's the reason why we did it was so that you would do that uh jonathan did you have any other comments no no that, that's really all i found um Okay, let's move on to this one. This one's from Connor Cambridge. Uh, Connor said on Pulp Fiction, um, this isn't more, this isn't a correction, just a cool observation. Actually, several people had um, that might work as one of those laments after the moment that you mentioned, Chris. Uh, in, you, in the video, you mentioned how they probably shouldn't have won the trophy, but we never see them actually win it. You see later in a scene with Butch and Fabian on the TV in which a news channel, the headline shows that the trophy from Jack Rabbits was stolen. Just thought that was worth a mention. Nice video, guys. Nonetheless, good job. Yeah, uh, this was actually a, a, a thing that uh, I had heard before we did the Sins video, um, but I... I, and I had never seen this before, but I thought that it was the radio broadcast as Butch walked past the apartment going towards his apartment because there's something about Jackrabbit Slims, I think. Oh. I think it's just an ad, okay. though. Um, I did not know it was a, an ad on the TV or a, not a, a news program on the TV. I didn't know that that's where it was, so I was not looking for it. Right. But I remember, I remember that um, that uh, that that was a discussion uh, after it had come out. Actually, it's in the IMDb trivia or something like that. I believe I remember reading up on this. Uh, a long time ago and they said oh there's a thing that says that it might have been stolen uh so i was looking for this and i was like oh i just didn't see it and i have the subtitles on so there wasn't anything that said that the trophy was stolen that i oh, saw in the subtitles um well the next so, time you watch it so maybe can, look for it and see if it's actually there i mean it came up a couple of times in comments. I know when I watch it, I'll be looking for it because one of the things that drives Aaron up the wall that he rants about is that most of the time it's like they use the TVs as sort of a plot device to sort of move things forward. And so somebody is sitting in the room and the TV is playing a news channel. That's the volume was all the way up and it has information that they need. But in this case in Pulp Fiction, it's in the background and it's really subtle. And I guess unless you're really like listening for it, you wouldn't even know it's there. Which yeah, and is neat. Especially since uh, I think both times the TV is on, it's playing some sort of, like the when when he wakes up the next day, it's she's watching some sort of motorcycle movie or whatever, and um and so like subconsciously you're just thinking, man, everything's so loud, and it's just this motorcycle movie, and that's just kind of the background to the, the discussion that they have. And so, like, yeah, I never once uh, have actually seen it uh, or heard it. And I'll have to, now that I know the the place of where it is, I'll have to go back and, and, and look at that. But, but yeah, uh, the, it, yeah, it's one of those things where it's one of those things, they, a detail that they throw in, which doesn't necessarily change 
uh, what you say about it because you don't know if it's been, yeah, you don't know if it's been stolen or not, but, uh, but it is an interesting detail. Another interesting detail came from Mr. Thistleblum 11 on the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids comments said, some scorpions are less than an inch long and their young are perhaps 10 times the size of a common ant. Carpenter ants are larger than that. This was all about the sin regarding whether or not the scorpion would be the similar size as the ant. And um, right. that is another thing I, I personally love to see in the comments is people who are like, actually, I happen to know about this. And like, oh, how yeah. how do you randomly I, know these things? That's I, awesome. I like it, too. Although I will say this was a tab thing, too. Uh, yeah. This is something that I looked up. I was like, what are the size of scorpions? And like everything that came up was way bigger than an egg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so like uh, so I didn't find anything that was as small as an ant. Um, you know, um, in, in, and I guess that they're saying in this, that's one of those fire ants that are bigger yeah. than normal. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, at, at the same time, I, I, I don't know if that was a fire ant or a regular ant. It's not made uh, clear. It's not made uh, clear. And you know what? People who love this movie, they're going to defend all the things that <laughs> are offending them. Anyway. It's true. It's true. Uh, however, it's one of those sins that sometimes I'll just cut because there's just no way to know. And right. There's always, it. There, the world is so big that yes, there probably are this probably. size scorpion, this size ant, and you can uh. find them in California because that's where they are. I had to look that up too. Uh. Um, <laughs> you know whether or not the these two species could even exist in a backyard and some in some in California. And this um, actually occurred had, in Australia, where everything is crazy anyway. Right, right, right. So, like, when you look it up, and and yeah, this is the the, the extent of the research because mainly your job is to write about the movie. You'll go and Google it. You'll look at a couple of websites and you see something like, okay, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't seem like uh, anything is uh, telling me that I'm wrong here. So then you just go yep. with it. Yep. Oh, I had that experience in the Game of Thrones when I talked about uh, the curling of the hair and how it's like curling irons didn't exist. And I learned a lot in the comments that day. Apparently medieval hair curling is totally normal. Just didn't know. Ah, but you could have always said, <laughs> how do we know that this is medieval times anyway? Yeah, this exactly. This is a completely different world. Yeah, thanks, Chris. See, all these weeks later, I'm finally finding healing. I'm glad we're having this conversation. <laughs> uh, the final one came from Andrew Ertl, who said, holy crap, they mentioned Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Props yeah. to you guys. So was that yours, Jonathan? Yeah, that, that was Chris. Was mine. That was yours. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I actually uh, took a class in. Um, I think it was. I think it was Tennessee Tech. I had a film class where it was sort of a maybe it was an, maybe it was MTSU. I can't remember which class this was. Um, uh, but it was a film class that uh, had a little bit of an uh, English or psychology bent to it. And, um, and, uh, they, and, uh, the, the professor asked us to, uh, look at, um, m characters and movies based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, uh, and so like, um, so I can't remember, I can't, I mean, this was 24 years ago, so I can't remember like what movie we watched and what, where, where I applied this or whatever. But I know that it's been 24 years since I've even mentioned Maslow's hierarchy <laughs> of needs. This is why I'm so proud of it. Um, you should uh, be. Uh, uh, the you know, and I and and I'm trying to remember what this was in reference to. Was this because Rick Moranis was uh, going to eat cereal instead of looking for his kids or something? Is oh that man, what it was? I don't remember when it came up in the. Um, sins video because when i saw this comment i was like i don't i don't even know what it that could means. have also been uh the 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 girl who is worried about meeting the boy at the mall right uh, and, and 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 she's and meanwhile the real problem here is that she's they're shrunk down to size and, and could try, die. <laughs> yeah and uh, i think that might have been that actually might have been it uh, and so well, like, that's where that came in because, cause you know, the, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's an important kind of pyramid when you're, when you're, uh, thinking about why characters are, you know, if, if characters really would be caring about too much about like, oh, there's this boy I like at the mall, 
over the fact that you know she's shrunk and could die and, <laughs> and at any moment and everything like that. Yeah, so, uh, I love. Yeah, I, loved- I was happy about that. I was too because I learned. I actually went. I have, I've got the pyramid pulled up here at the bases of uh, physiological needs, like you know, air, water, food, shelter, and then then mm-hmm. safety needs. So. That's right. what we're talking about here. Personal <laughs> and, security. And, uh, and it ended up being a tab too. It was a tab too because <laughs> I, I had to I had to kind of like uh, reacquaint myself with it. Yeah. To make I, sure that it was like okay, are these needs above your like your material needs? And of course right. they are. Of course and, they are. Uh, love and belonging is next. Friendship, intimacy, then esteem, like respect and self esteem and status. And then at the very top is self actualization, which is a desire to become the most that one can be. Right. So that gave me a lot of things to think about before going to bed. I was like, wow. Yeah, basically <laughs> it comes down to when when those bottom needs are met, then you try the second part. And right. then the second part, the third part. And then the yeah. self actualization is like, okay, I've got all of that on lock. Then, let's, then what you transcend, you become invisible and kind of go to another plane of existence, and you're vibrating oh. at this new frequency. Is that is that yeah, what's next? Exactly. Okay. Oh, very cool. few people reach that part where they can become invisible and fly off to the end of the galaxy and everything. I'm working like that. on There's that. only been like three people <laughs> in history that's done I'll, that. I'm going to be the fourth. You watch. <laughs> I I can't wait. <laughs> Be, sh- be hey, you know what? Remember, <laughs> you you have to take pictures of it, or it didn't happen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Make a video. I'll try to take mm-hmm. my material phone with me that's and see right. what happens. All right. Well, let's move on to beyond the sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit about something else from pop culture that we would like for you to know. This could be TV, movie, game, book. Um, it could be anything. Uh, we'll start, Jonathan, with you. What would you like to talk about this week for Beyond the Sins? Well, I finally, which I don't know. Well, I was out of town when it got released. So it took me a couple weeks to get to uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, ah. I'm a huge, huge, huge Spider-Man person. Um, I don't think I liked this Boo. very much. <laughs> I, I haven't know. seen it. Boo, Jonathan. I am terrible person. No, no, no. Is that the I one understand. That, I understand. Did completely. that just come out? Like, just, just come out? Came out, like, July 4th, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. been out okay. for a couple weeks now. Okay. Um, no, I, there was, um, like, like it seems like with all the Spider-Man movies, like, the action always gets better. Like, they just, they get the effects better with him swinging. And so there was some really exciting uh, set pieces in this one. Um, especially the stuff with, um, I guess, is that, I can't remember what country they're in when the, with the water, but. Oh, um, Venice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Italy, but you know, Venice, they're in Venice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. Um, but yeah, like there was some really cool uh, set pieces and I still think Tom Holland's really good. And I enjoyed the stuff with him and Zendaya, uh, the, the Parker and Mary Jane stuff. The other character stuff, though, just fell really flat for me. Um, a lot of the side character stuff just – I didn't – I don't know. I, for some reason, I just didn't find this as fun yeah. as Homecoming. Um, and then I I really, really want a Spider-Man. And I get the Iron Man stuff in this one because of what happened in Endgame. To a point, I get it. But I'm really – I'm really like I kind of forgave Homecoming for how much it ingrained like Tony Stark into like the villain's origins and the suit and all that kind of stuff, but it got it really got on my nerves in this one. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm mean, like, can we just can we just have a, a Spider Man movie? And Into the Spider Verse, to be fair, probably didn't help uh, how good that was. Yeah. Uh, probably didn't help, you know, going into this one, which I shouldn't hold that against this one, but you know, I mean, that was, that was an amazing, uh, Spider-Man movie. And so this just kind of felt a little flat for me. Um, it's fun. Like it's definitely not terrible or it's, I, I, I think overall I like it. Okay. But I'm definitely on the fence a lot more than I thought I would be. Did you, did you yeah, like it? I, quite did. A I think I liked it better than everybody that I know so far. Cause Jeremy and Barrett, Jeremy and Barrett liked it. Okay. I think they liked it more than you did, but, um, I really liked it. I don't know why I had a different experience with it. I, I think mm-hmm. I just really dug all the things that you just said that you didn't like. Yeah. So like, uh, I, I like 
you know, when when it comes to sins time, there's going to be a lot of the things that I like are going to get sinned. I just, I just like, I mean, maybe this is silly, and like, I don't really care if you change, like, like for instance, like in Iron Man three, like I had no issue with what they did with the Mandarin, like you know what they did for the movie versus what he's like in the comics, and the Mysterio character in Spider Man is is fine. I mean, like in Far From Home, um, it, it's and um, Jake Gyllenhaal does a very good job, um, but I just, I just want a villain that's not pissed off at Tony Stark. Yeah. Um. I, and you know, I just I found that really. I don't know, maybe that I hope that maybe that's a spoiler, but I, I found that really odd that um, we were doing that yet again. Because I mean, essentially, that's what the vultures thing is too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, not maybe not specifically Tony Stark, but just the Avengers and you know them making him lose money and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, I don't. Know. It, it does seem. It, I, I will say, as far as timeline is concerned, it seems like these guys sure do come out of the woodwork out of nowhere after years and years and years, uh, you know, doing nothing. Uh, they they suddenly just come out of nowhere and it's like, oh yeah, Tony Stark is a. I mean, like, I understand what they're saying. Tony Stark is such a a. a you know, big character and he's dealt with a lot of people in his life. And he used to be like really, really selfish, like more than he was before he became Iron Man. Uh, so like, he's probably made lots of enemies, but geez, they, it's taken him like, it's taken this guy 10 years to do his thing. Um, and then also I completely understand that they had, this was the first one after, well, this was the first one. I, yeah. This was the first one after end game. So I totally get they that had to have something to do with it too. Um, they had to deal with those ramifications. I will say I did kind of like I I'd said about the character stuff fell flat. I did like the happy in Spider Man stuff. Um, I didn't really like the happy yeah. in Aunt May stuff, but I did like the happy in uh, the Spider Man stuff. But I don't know. Like I said, it just yeah. I I think I'm just kind of for whatever reason what worked for a lot of people is is not working for me. And comedy is very subjective. So I mean, you know. That's true. But I just don't understand why yeah. these things and were I mean, funny and, and, to me in Homecoming, and they weren't as funny to me in this. Because it's essentially the well, same stuff. Well, there's the whole stuff. you don't like movies thing, too. There's that. <laughs> so, there is that. Uh, for Beyond the Sins, did you have something that you wanted to direct everyone towards, Chris? Uh, I watched the documentary on Netflix called The Great Hack. Um, uh basically uh the 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 story of cambridge analytica um and how uh they used a whole bunch of data points to direct uh, uh a bunch of uh, crazy stories your way in the 2016 presidential election um and uh and it shows uh it shows uh, the movie also shows how many different uh, places that Cambridge Analytica has worked before they've, that they've done, they've uh, held campaigns, uh, their, their social media campaigns in before. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the way that they've, they targeted, um, you know, people who were on the fence during the election with uh, some very highly, highly targeted uh, content. Uh, and it gets, uh, one of the people who worked uh, very closely with them was one of their top people and had a crisis of conscience. She's sort of the main character or whatever you want to say. Like the focus. The main person yeah. uh, in that. And, uh, and uh, you know, again, uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't think anybody's going to be changing their minds uh, uh, with these things. That's the unfortunate thing about information these days is that it doesn't matter how well sourced and verified it is. Uh, you're just going to believe what you're going to believe. But I think that uh, it uh, would prove illuminating to many people to watch that um, because uh, yeah, whether you're uh, it, you know, if you're, if you're someone who doesn't uh, like Donald Trump or whatever like that, you're going to watch this and go, yep, yeah, see that's, that's it. And then you're going to have other people in this world who are like, nope, that didn't change anybody's votes. Nobody's, and I think uh, what we all forget uh, as we live in our various bubbles and everything like that is that there are people out there who aren't in bubbles and that they are undecided about a lot of things and they're not like you. And uh, you have to remember that 
just because, you know, maybe like actual physical votes weren't changed or anything, but people's minds were changed during that whole thing. So anyway, and uh, so like, yeah, this is this is not meant to, uh, you know, because I'm pretty sure that we have people who, who like Trump, who listen to us and everything i'm not out there to say hey watch this and see see the reason why he was elected i'm just saying you know this is this is something that is happening out there and it's it should terrify you even if you're no matter what side Mm -hmm. you're right because the we live in a culture where um we can be targeted through the websites that we go to based on who's um platform we've decided to put our information like so for example on facebook we're choosing to give facebook all of our information, our age, whether we have children, whether we're married, where we work, where we live, the places that we go when we check into places every day, that's all information that we freely give Facebook. And in exchange, we can use their website. They don't charge us to do that. And so there's an opportunity for a company to use that information to their advantage. And this is an example of one way that a company can target you and target myself with advertisements and different things. And this is, I think, if nothing else, it's not necessarily like I think what I hear you say, Chris, is it's not about Trump. This is about that the technology exists. And and just like in other huge companies like, uh, well, like the Alphabet company, Google, you know, they can also use the information that we freely give to them as well to uh, to do things that are always going to be um, kind of pressing against our consciousness and asking us questions like, okay, do I have a moral issue with what's happening? Like this person that you mentioned in the documentary. And so it's a, at the very least an important thing for us living now in this culture to pay attention to. I think so. the thing, the main thing that I got from it was that you can't, if let, let's say you go out in the world, you're, you were a Hillary Clinton voter and you meet a fellow Hillary Clinton voter and you can't just assume that they were always pro Hillary Clinton the entire time that, you know, like you were or like maybe like maybe you were. You have to understand that there are people out there who did not know who they were voting for. Yeah. Uh, they they and they let a whole bunch of other things sort of uh, knock them uh, one way or the other. And, you know, there were a lot of just weird and just unverified and untrue stories that came right. out. And people were swayed by those mm-hmm. things. And you got to realize that just because in your bubble, everybody was always going to vote for one person right. doesn't mean that everybody else was going to do that, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, if there was one thing about the great hack that while they imply it, they don't get into the, the deep details. And it could be just that they she couldn't get that far into it. But I wish I know that they imply that that what they did was they found uh, these fringe voters and they targeted these ads towards them and that uh, most of them went this one way and it swayed certain districts and so on and so forth. Uh, I wish that they I wish they could have asked her, uh, you know, sort of like, is there verifiable evidence that what you did made an impact swayed people's votes? Yeah. Um, and instead they just kind of like imply it and and I mean, implied strongly it's, I mean, it's pretty easily, uh, deduced from what you see, but, um, I would like to know some of the data that goes behind that. Could you verify for a fact that, you know, this district was going to go Hillary Clinton and then it went Donald Trump or whatever. Uh, I wish they had gone a little bit more than that. Uh, instead they do, uh, talk about like all the different, um, uh, you know that she, she's sort they're they're sort of like uh it's kind of like Snowden she's like getting flown around and she's trying to avoid uh being seen right. by anybody because yeah. there's like it's a, it's dangerous it to is. have the information that she has and uh you know and um and so like it shows her uh testifying in in this uh court in uh the UK and uh the guy who's behind Cambridge Analytica his uh, his testimony and her reaction to his testimony from from afar you know you'll see him say something and she goes oh that's just a total lie or you know that type of thing um and 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 all, and you know and they don't let uh, Facebook and all these other uh, companies off the hook either uh you know the uh, 
uh, Zuckerberg goes up there and he's like, I, yeah, I don't, I wasn't aware of, uh, any of my people hanging out with Cambridge Analytica. And she's like, uh, we were, I, I was at their building and blah, 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 you know, that type of thing. You know, she'll like, as soon as he says something, he's like, yeah, we were hanging out with those guys all the time. What do you, I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but you know, you, ultimately they, these type of things are always ends up being a he said, mm-hmm. she said type yeah. of thing. And it's, that's why it's so hard to say, yeah, watch this and have your mind blown and changed because that's not what gonna, what's going right. to happen. It's- but I do think. I do think at the very least you should realize what's going on out there. And remind everybody again what it was uh, it's called. It's called The Great Hack. Yeah, I haven't. It's I, on Netflix. I, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but it's it's high on my list of things to check out. So. Well, my uh, one for today, my Beyond the Sins, is definitely not serious. It's uh, pure entertainment in podcast audio format, and it's going to be no surprise. How dare you entertain <laughs> It's in the D&D format. Um, I have been... Since my first time mentioning that I'm a D&D fan, I've been getting uh, people messaging me specifically on Twitter with various shows to listen to. Um, so I'm I'm listening to quite a few and I'm, I'll am i definitely as time goes on, I'll mention more of the ones that I really enjoy. But there is a there's one pretty popular one called uh, Not Another D&D Podcast or for short NADPOD, N-A-D-D-P-O-D. <laughs> Um, these guys are, uh, I think if I remember correctly, they're from like college humor sort of website ask. And so they're, they're writers and performers and actors. And so they know how to put on a really great audio show. So a lot of the D and D podcasts that I listen to are just, you know, normal people like you and me sitting around with microphones and, you know, you're listening to them play the show. Uh, in this case, they edit it down to where you're kind of hearing the, the best moments, they do have like a Patreon where you can listen to like the behind the scenes type stuff if you want to do that. But um, it's like this Big per- Brother After Dark. Yeah, like they kind of go. Be- <laughs> yeah, they kind of go behind each episode and talk more about why the decisions that they made in playing and the the dungeon master will talk more about like things that could have happened if they would have gone this way instead of this way, you know, things like that. But in general, I think what I want you to hear is that if you decide to listen to this, first of all. It is a um, raunchy, cussy, fun, uh, fun time. Um, abs- Sweet. It is not a people sitting around. I mean, they do play the game with the rules, but the players of the game are just full of shenanigans. Uh, it's the kind of uh, role playing tabletop role playing game where someone's going to be like, can I take this donkey and like remove its ears and stick it on my head and hear better? You know, they're just asking really funny questions. And then you've got the, the, the DM who's in charge of everything being like, I guess so. Sure. Let's say that you do that. And sometimes, you know, He'll be like, no, you can't do that. Stop. Quit it. So anyways, it's a lot of fun. It's just a totally like exuberant. Yes. And improv, uh, really fun. And the characters that they've developed just are freaking hilarious. Oh my God. Um, one of the main characters is an elf, you know, very common, but it's a, she's called a crick elf, which is like a hillbilly. So she wears like overalls and has a possum the whole time and, you know, just <laughs> totally unexpected uh, character development beyond just the, yes, I'm a high elf from, you know, da 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 you know, I, I feel like oftentimes I'll hear shows and they're all very serious. This is total goofiness and I freaking love it. Again, it's called Not Another D&D Podcast. You can find them on Twitter, too. Um, super fun. That, um, that kind of reminds me of... Um uh, I don't know. I, I only saw one episode, but uh, Dan Harmon had this thing on one of those like niche comedy, like, you know, nine ninety nine a month services. And it was called Harmon Quest. Yeah. Yes. Aaron's and, talked uh, about that. And he would go. <laughs> oh, they talk no, about Aaron, that? Aaron has told me about that. He said that I would love oh, it. Aaron's yeah, told yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I only saw one episode, uh, mainly because it was the free one that they threw right, on YouTube. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I'm not going to pay another certain amount of money for yet another service. Right. And I think I think it folded, but um, but like uh, uh, it's the it's the sort of the, like that they would go out and do a table yes. read, and then they would animate yes. it. Afterwards. Yes. Yep, they, kind of very similar in that, it, but in this case, it's all just exists in pod, uh, podcast world. They do live shows, 
uh so they do you know get a, they do have a following and and do live shows and stuff and um but i just think you know it's a it's a very high quality uh for some people i would recommend that they listen to something like critical role which i've mentioned before uh and and that is more kind of maybe even more standard character building but if you want to hear something that you maybe haven't heard before i would recommend uh recommend this one it is it's a ball <laughs> It's not something I would nice. recommend for everyone because some people get super offended by some of the things, but oh my God, it's just the friggin' best. And it is something that I, <laughs> I look forward to listening to it every single, every single week. It's one of those you, that when it pops in. You make my mind. choices every week sound so boring. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, go stolen Spider Man. I don't like it. I watched it. Oh, no, you're fine. You're I'm going to have fine. like, I'm going to have like a knitting <laughs> podcast or something next week. I'm yes. Gonna... Uh, um, hey, before we go, usually this is when we close out the episode, but I just popped on Twitter for a split second and we did have a direct question from somebody on Twitter and I would cool. just feel terrible about if we didn't answer it because I told him that I would. This is from Mr. Peterson at OB3 Pro says, I have a question. What is it like collaborating on a job like this for podcasts and sins videos when so many of you guys are in different locations? Does that make the creative process harder? What a freaking great question. Uh, I'll answer first. I don't think so. I am a little bit of a social person and I do have a desire to get in the same space with people because then I feel like you can see, you know, expressions and maybe understand, um, understand more things, but that's more like on a, uh, uh, the, the side, the, the business side of stuff, you know, like if we're going to have a staff meeting or something, I think getting together in person or on Skype is is much more preferred to emails because you can you can suss out a lot more than just written text. But as far as like from my experience being the new 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 person on the on the team, um, it's not bad because you can't socially watch you can't send a video with the team because everyone would be pausing it at different parts to think things through. We all have our own creative process. So that would be impossible. And then like putting the script together is something that you don't have to be in the same space to do either. So this job in a way kind of lends itself on the podcasting side of things. I would say it's a little easier for, I think Aaron and I, because we are in the same room together and I do wish we could kind of all be in the same space. Yeah. For well, stuff same like goes that. for the Sincast because they're, they're in the, they're in the same studio together. When yeah. They or if I'm, if I'm on there, I'm there with them. Right. Yeah, it's extremely hard to like it, like this. I think we're all in three different. Yeah, places, yeah. Right? For this particular shot, so yeah. like <laughs> there's been some times. There's been some times uh, uh, during this podcast where I'm like, uh, should I say something or uh, do I need to get this in before you know? Like it, it's it's hard to know if someone is about to say something or is about to be finished mm -hmm. with what they're saying or you know stuff like that. So uh, only from sort of an etiquette standpoint, it's kind of hard on a podcast like this to do that. But yeah, the sin cast is all in the same room. We used to do that in three different spots because we didn't have a studio. Yeah. We didn't have a studio back then. And, um, uh, and so like, um, so like, uh, we would, um, uh, we would have to do that whole, like, well, should I say something now or should I not? Uh, Danae is completely right also about, uh, you know, trying to get, uh, certain things, um, uh, how to how to express certain things through writing and stuff. I think this is the reason why, you know, Twitter is evil and everything is like times when you say when you write things, people don't know exactly what your mood is or how you're saying mm -hmm. it or what your total meaning is. So so text itself can be uh, hard to 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 parse a lot of times as far as emotional, uh, you know, sort of, you know, what you mean, what you totally mean. It's hard to see when you don't see somebody's expression, yeah. um, and things like that. Uh, I will say that, uh, there's been a couple of times where we have gotten, I've, I got, we, it's me, Jeremy and Mike all got together to do the, uh, Tim Burton planet of the apes. The videos become completely different when you're when you're actually all in the same room trying to write uh, because you you will say something out loud and then it gets written down sort of shorthand. And I think we wrote like a million sins for that Tim Burton <laughs> Planet of the Apes, but it ended up being a pretty short video because we're trying to get like fast things in 
like we would like it was Mystery Science Theater mm-hmm. or something like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that would be fun. I think it'd be fun to do something like all together. Um, and we do. We do Sins Week uh, that I didn't get to go to last year, but I think we'll be going in 2020. So we do have a chance to kind of get together even with you guys. And then um, Aaron and I uh, plan to travel not very far away. Uh, Missouri is not too far from Nashville. So we'll just kind of zip down and spend some time. So we do we do get together in person then. So there, yeah, there's pros and cons to, I think, probably every single business model. But at the end of it, you just want to make sure your team is dedicated to the deadlines and that since we're all kind of working on our own, that we just kind of trust each other that we, you know, are staying on yeah. target. Well, and like 20 years ago, this might have been difficult, but right. today's age, there's just so many ways to get a hold of people with technology and everything. It's it's really not bad. Not too bad. Great question. And thanks for that. Hey, as we kind of transition here to the end of the show, just thank you guys so much for listening to Behind the Sins. Uh, don't forget to make sure that you are subscribed and you can leave a comment and rate on whatever platform you listen to. You can also find us uh, on social media. I don't know if Chris, are you on social media anywhere, or are you like totally off the grid? Um, with uh, Sincast presented by Cinema Sins on Facebook, I I go in and comment on that. Uh, on our Discord, I go over and print and uh, uh, comment. Yeah, on that. but yeah, I'm not on. So Twitter. probably Discord might be the best place to connect. Um, how do people find our Discord? Is it link? Is it linked on Twitter or something? Just out of curiosity? No. Okay. Um, one thing that I've told people through the Sincast is just to go to the private messages on Facebook and, and ask for a link. And I've just been sending them links okay. that way uh, because they only last a day. Oh, so right. I can't just like, I mean, I guess, I guess I could, I guess I could change the settings where it lasts longer, but I'd rather just not put a post up right. there that's going to have, uh, be out smart. of date at some point. Super smart. And, and so, uh, so like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just that's just the way it has okay. to be. Is like if you can somehow get through um, uh, Facebook and, and uh, private message, I can send you the Discord. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, so you can connect with us um, on Twitter, and, and like somebody will get you if you want to join uh, that. To connect with us on Twitter, you can find Aaron Dicer at Aaron Dicer, myself at Danae says, and Jonathan at Sam Loomis thirteen. What is Sam Loomis? <laughs> That is a uh, – Sam Loomis is a character in both Psycho, the original Psycho and the original Halloween, uh, most notably known for Halloween. It's Donald Pleasance's character in the Halloween movies. Oh. Um, and Malcolm McDowell played him in the Rob Zombie ones. When I was in college, I had to come up with an email, and um, that was like my first email because I'm old and uh-huh. you know – and uh, so Sam Loomis <laughs> my, 13. 13 is my favorite number. So those my, two things were just something I did, and uh, it just kind of stuck. Like That's I kept, awesome. Yeah. Like that used to be my online poker name, and it's just kind of followed me, and uh, a lot of people know me by that, so I've just kept it up. If I would have kept mine from when I was a kid, it would be Turtle Girl, thir- uh, th- Turtle Girl 22. Nice. So nice. I, th- I think that's oh, a good thank one, you. though. You should keep yeah. that. Turtle, turtle with a Y. I was super clever. Anyway, so for Jonathan Watkins, Chris Atkinson, and myself, we will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BehindTheSinsPod at gmail.com. And be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter. And be sure to visit CinemaSins.com. Jonathan Watkins. Do you have any opinions on radio today? <laughs> Do I have any opinions on radio? I'm just joking. Or opinions on radio <laughs> today? Like as in philosophically. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, pretend to You've be done him. it before. You've, you've stolen his I'm, identity I'm a couple of times. going to do terrible at it. I know that. I have. Uh, that's, just a, that's just plain fact. Well... Mm-hmm. I I thought that I was being sneakier, but apparently you shouldn't right. just I mean, tweet about it. Luckily, you guys are buddies. Take so, pictures. You know, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't have it wouldn't have gone <laughs> yes. quite the way it did if it if that was the if you were just a complete stranger. But you know, everything worked out in the end. I think the court sorted it out, and everything was good. Yeah, yeah. I learned a valuable lesson. You don't go oh, for yeah. the big ticket items. You just start small. 
You know, he'd be wondering, right. well, did I actually buy? You've got to mix in like palette? candy and stuff like that, that, so that. you throw but it off the scent. Like, right. Instead, I got one of those 360 degree fast moving lawnmower oh, yeah. things. That was stupid. But I'm t- I'm tired I mean, of pushing away, and I thought, you know, here's my opportunity. That shows up so. on their bank <laughs> It's only yeah, a few thousand yeah. dollars. He's super rich, anyway. <laughs> By the way, I I, uh, I I don't know if I'm able to to swear yeah, on this can. one. I know oh, that yeah. it, I know that it's it because it's it's mainly it's like a sift pop <laughs> slash cinema sins combination <laughs> type of thing. No, this and is entirely I, cinema sins universe. Yeah, yeah. And, and and but and and so like uh, you know it's one of those things where it's like. Usually on Sift Pop, I, I will not say these words, but now I like, you know, I guess, I guess in my mind, I was like, yeah, this is Cinema Sins. We'll go for the fuck. Let's do it. Do it. Uh, and just like that, the show is over. Both Chris and Jonathan are gone and I'm in the studio all by myself and I'm reflecting and I'm thinking, how did I do as the host of Behind the Sins show? And I'm realizing it did pretty damn good. You know, I'm pretty proud of myself. I, I I tried to stay focused. I tried to move the conversation along. I tried to have compelling and interesting uh, comments and questions for our super important guest, my boss, Chris. So, hey, if it didn't go well, I'll know next week when I'm fired. Uh, Which, as you guys know, it's been a concern of mine since day one. N- not because I don't believe in myself, but because I don't believe in myself. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of a complicated thing. I definitely, definitely don't feel like I regret anything that I said to Chris, except for that time when I forgot that I'd ever spoken to him before. That was a little embarrassing. Uh, but you know, it's going to be fine. I'm going to stop recording now. Um, we'll see you guys later. Cause I'm assuming Jonathan, if he decides to put this into the podcast, it's because it's super interesting. Uh, I feel like I should say something really funny and interesting before I go. But instead, I'm just going to make a really awkward noise. And then, and then, or like, yeah, like that. I like that one better. God, I'm weird. <laughs>